Keith. And kicking things off, Stuart Jones for the Mountaineers. And here we go this afternoon at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone. A deep kickoff, and Springfield has that one goes through his hands and out of the end zone. And the Buccaneers will take over first and 20, uh, first and 10 on the 20-yard line. Be interesting to see what East Tennessee State tries to do right off the bat. Last week, quarterback Todd Wells had a great game running the football as well as throwing the football. In fact, he had more rushing yards than any East Tennessee State quarterback in a long, long time. So it'll be interesting to see what he, what he winds up doing. 72 yards rushing last year. That was the highest since 1987. Of course, he's throwing the ball awfully well, too. Let's see what that redshirt freshman does. Well, featured back in that backfield for the Buccaneers, of course, Brandon Walker, number 44, the sophomore from Forest Park, Georgia. The Buccaneers are 11-0 when he rushes for more than 100 yards in the ballgame. Wells will keep it, and nothing more. Not even a yard is back to the line of scrimmage. The Mountaineers defense all over him. Good stop there by the Mountaineer defense. They know if they're going to do anything against this East Tennessee offense, they've really got to come from all sides, backside, front side, any side that they can get a hold of him and just wrap him up and, and get it started. Jamie Lover making that tackle there, and uh, that's what they need to see with the defensive tackles. There you see Paul Hamilton back in his alma mater. Second and 10 for the Buccaneers, going to 20. Well, to give it to Edwards, it breaks the tackle. Springfield, I guess. Well, App State's going to run a much different defense this week at East Tennessee State. They're, they're lining up in a basic 5-2, but they're bringing folks, and they're going to stunt their defensive linemen quite a bit to try to get into the backfield and not let Wells and also let uh, Walker and Brian Edwards, a big fullback, get started there. You like these third and six and seven. just makes it a little tougher on the offense to convert. Well, on the 24-yard line for ETSU. Well, back to throw. And he has Anakin on the right side. He's out of bounds at the 46-yard line. That'll be a first down for ETSU. Nice play by B.J. Adigan last week. A, just a great week as he tied the career receptions high. He's uh, just one touchdown away from setting a new East Tennessee State mark at 151 yards in receptions. That tied his all-time mark. He is definitely a go-to guy. And all he ran was a little out route there and just kind of beat the defensive back. A nice pass by Wells right on the money. Big first down. will keep it and he will lose yardage dropped at the 42 yard line it's Jackie Lee Avery the big defensive tackle coming in Jackie Lee Avery and you know what he's at 27 straight starts so he knows what to do with the with the football play of defense good play there by the app defense 20 tackles for Avery on the season two sacks and six quarterback pressures he was in there quick on Wells you know, it's East Tennessee State already trying to change up the offense, run a little option and run a nice little out route. They're trying to run some different things. Uh, and now look at this, going to the shotgun. They spread things out last week against the Catamounts. Wells and the keeper gets away, and he gains a couple, but the Mountaineers wrap him up after a gain of just a yard. Taken down by Joey Hall, 52. Boy, what pursuit by Joey Hall, six foot two, 225 pounder, and he just would not, would not be denied. He was going to chase down Wells and just grab anything he could, shirt, arms, pants, legs, anything, towel, whatever he could find. He was going to make that stop. So it sets up a third down and nine, the ball on the 44-yard line. Buccaneers converting on third down one time already in this drive. They need to get to the 47 of the Mountaineers. Wells to throw under pressure, lets it go. Looking for Adigan, has him as he beats the cornerback, and he's down to the 22-yard line. That right there shows you what a great athlete that B.J. Adigan is. Wells under pressure just heaved it, and Orlando Johnson, the cornerback for App State, just got turned around as B.J. Adigan came all the way back up the field Take a look at this again. Nice pressure, nice pressure. And then Wells is just going to uncork it. But look at, this is a great angle of Adigan. Look at, he sees it's going to be short. He turns around, comes back, and gets the football. Makes a nice play. He was almost going to fair catch that because Wells just threw it up as best he can. Johnson just got turned around. And look at that big play. Adigan again making another big play for this East Tennessee offense. 
So it's first down for the Buccaneers, the 22-yard line. Pretty good opening drive. Wells gives it to Walkers. Carry is down to the 16-yard line. Gain of six. You know, East Tennessee State's got a lot of weapons, Matt. I mean, they can throw the football. Wells can run the football. they got those two running backs, and they're really running backs. They're not like fullback tailback. They're two running backs that are in the backfield. They can do a lot of things, and that really opens up an offense for you when you can go to a lot of different people. And yeah, Walker came in with 431 yards rushing. And Edwards, 228 yards. That was the keeper, and he's brought down again. First in there, Steve Carson. Love the story about Steve Carson. You know, his family's big time involved in drag racing. I love that. Love that. He, he likes life in the fast lane. Take a look at him right here. Run the option play backside. Coming and making a nice stop. And you like to see that Rocky Hunt also in on that stop. And that's good defense there. And that's exactly what you got to do to the East Tennessee offense is get to him quickly. Jerry Moore looking on from the sidelines, hoping his Mountaineers can stop this ETSU drive. Well, it's right up the middle as he gives it to Edwards. Brian Edwards, the senior from Ocala, Florida. He'll be close to the first down. Uh, depends on whether they give him a left or a right foot mark. It looks like they gave him the old right foot. If it's a right foot, it's going to be a first down, and that's what it is. At the 11-yard line, it's first and 10. They can get another first down just inside the one. Now, Paul Hamilton has to be really happy with this drive so far. <laughs> Don't you know he is? My goodness. They've done a lot of things. They've run option. They've run straight ahead. They've done a couple of big pass plays. Uh, they, you know, they've done a lot of things on this first drive to make the defense think. Wells pitches it out to Brandon Walker around the right side. He breaks one tackle, but he's dragged down at the five-yard line. And there's a flag on the play. Yeah, I think we got a hold or possibly even a clip on that right side as they ran the sweep to that right side. It looked like a holding to me. Sometimes the, the people on the corners have to make that hook. Ah, they're going to call it. Ocean call. My goodness. Well, well, well. Looked like, though, they had somebody that was just tackling one of the defensive ends for, <laughs> for App State. They may have got away with one there. So it backs him up five yards. And it'll be first and 15 from the 16-yard line. We mentioned penalties in the keys. Look at this. Illegal formation, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Five-yard penalty here instead of having it uh, second down and about seven to go. You got it first and 15. There's a big difference between first and 15 and second and seven. 9.30 to go in the opening quarter. No score as the Buccaneers are on their opening drive. Wells gives it to Edwards. He picks up a few. And it sets up a second down. Now one thing the Buccaneers will have to deal with today is not being in the dome chip and the wind a factor on the field goal. Wind will be a factor. Also, there is the little problem with the field being flat in the dome, and of course, it's not flat here. It's got the, got the little hump in the middle as it slants down on both sides. And you don't have that. That that may make a difference when Wells throws the football. Ball on the 12-yard line, second down and 11 for the Buccaneers. Now again, it's Edwards on the carry. Jackie Lee Avery bringing him down. And he just met him in the hole. I mean, that was face mask to face mask, mano y mano. Boy, that's good defense. That's fun to watch when they get in there and bust heads like that. Boy, that's good stuff. Big third down here, Matt. Third and 10. Mountaineers trying to hold ETSU. Wells out of the shotgun. Two wide on the left side. Wells looking for the corner. And he overthrows Anthony Stringfield. That'll set up a fourth down and bring out the kicking team for East Tennessee State. Their kicker, Jerry Chapman, the junior from Clarksville, Georgia. He's three for three this season inside the 30-yard line. Jerry Chapman, 
This one about a 29 yarder. His long 34 in the season. And the kick is up and good. So the Buccaneers are on top, 3 0. An impressive opening drive for Paul Hamilton's club as Jerry Chatlin puts the Buccaneers on the board. So we'll take a break here in the first quarter as ETSU is successful on their opening drive, 3 0. Buccaneers. It's on top, 3 0, with a field goal from Jerry Chatlin, 29 yards. And now the Mountaineers set to start their first offensive possession of the afternoon. Great drive by East Tennessee State. They go 12 plays, 73 yards, 649 off the clock. And that's an impressive drive, an impressive start. But you know Coach Paul Hamilton is probably pulling hairs out of his head because of that five-yard penalty when they had it first and 10 to go about the 11-yard line. They get a five-yard penalty and wind up having to settle for a field goal instead of a touchdown. I guarantee you he'd rather have seven than three on that drive. Back to receive number 21, L.J. Brooks for Appalachian State. The kick will be short and towards the sidelines. That's out of bounds, and a flag is thrown. And one of the East Tennessee cheerleaders could have caught that one. That was over there in that vicinity. They could have made a catch. So the Mountaineers will take over first and 10. On the 35-yard line. They the quarterback, Bank Baker, the senior from Kinston, North Carolina. His first start last year was against the thundering herd of Marshall. They lost the ball game here, but they did go on to win his next three starts. He's had an impressive start to his senior campaign. Dan had a great week last week against the Citadel, 16 of 24, 212 yards passing and three touchdowns. So he, he can get the job done. I don't think there's any question about that. But, you know, your back is up against the wall here a little bit. We mentioned that App needed to make something happen early. They need to respond to that three that East Tennessee put up on the board to start the game. The talk of the Mountaineers going to spread things out today and maybe uh, trying something deep right off the bat. Baker back to throw. Here is the deep pass. Looking out to the right side for Jerry Gibson. Gibson has it and out of bounds to the 24-yard line. We had a little uh, inkling they might be going long to start things off. And Bank Baker connecting with the sophomore from Asheville, North Carolina, Joey Gibson, their big player receiver, and the Mountaineers are in business. That's his 23rd reception of the year. That leads the conference. He's got two TDs, a 12.4 yards per game average. Baker had all day. I mean, he could have drank a Coke and he was some popcorn back there waiting on that one. Joey Gibson wide open. Nice, nice throw, nice catch, big play. Something happened early. So it's first and 10 on the 24-yard line for Appalachian State, trailing 3-0. Great field position after a bomb to Gibson. Gerard Hardy. Gerard Hardy. He picked up a few. You know, Matt Hardy's probably just now coming into his own in that tailback role. They moved him last year, the end of last year. Big change from quarterback to tailback. you got to learn how to run in the hole, and it's much different than running from a quarterback position. He's really starting to come into his own here in the last few weeks. He's reading these holes better, reading the blocks better. He's done a great job for him at tailback. At 91 yards last week at the Citadel, and had his first 100-plus yard game against Eastern Kentucky two weeks ago here in Boone. Bank Baker over center. He'll be working a lot from the shotgun, we've been told, today as well. Baker on the keeper. And he's across the 15-yard line where he's brought down. Well, he made a nice play on that option play there. He just decided, uh, I got a pump fake, I got a pump fake the pitch, and finally just cut it up and makes a nice gain. And he is close to the first down stick. Now the Mountaineers, like ETSU, shaking things up on their first possession. We've seen the bomb to Gibson. Hardy on a run, and now the option keeper by Bank Baker. There's Jerry Moore, 64 and 34 at Appalachian State, his ninth year heading up the Mountaineers program here in Boone. Class of 61 at Baylor. They give this to Hardy straight up the middle. He'll gain a couple, maybe three yards, was brought down. And that is the first down. It's interesting to see a little of the cat and mouse going on with what uh, both teams are giving each other. App State coming out with a, a lot of a two tight end look, and that's kind of changed East Tennessee's defense. They usually run a, a basic 50 defense, but they've actually moved some folks up on the outside to try to counter the two tight ends. 
good play there. They went into that power eye and just ran behind everybody off the right side. And Hardy picking up that big first down. Mark Collins in on the tackle, number 51. There's Gerard Hardy. Ball on the 13-yard line. And the pitch goes to Hardy on the right side. He sweeps down and he's out of bounds. Knocked out of bounds. At the three-yard line, knocked out by Adam Walton. And a lot of teams don't like to run that toss sweep back to the short side of the field, but Appalachian State does it quite a few times when they get near the goal line. Here it is to the short side of the field. And I think they do it because Hardy is, is starting to really see where to, to move with the football when he gets to the corner. Here we go. Well, we're going to see it and didn't quite get to it. We'll try to get back later on to that play. But when they run that short side toss sweep, in fact, they may run it again this way and run it a weak side away from the tight end. Hardy picked up nine yards in the carry, so there's one to go for the first down. And right there, Hardy is dropped. Frank Charles out of Dorchester, Massachusetts, the senior dropped him. And that'll be a loss. That is a huge, huge play by Frank Charles. My goodness, he fought through his block and gets into the backfield and just absolutely slams the door before it ever opens. Maybe they should have run that sweep back to the short side of the field. Lost four yards on the play. Sets up a third down and five. Ball resting now on the nine-yard line. And now Baker working out of the shotgun for the first time. He's under pressure. Dumps it over the middle. That's a touchdown. Touchdown by Rashad Swain. His first touchdown of the season. Freshman from Reedsville, North Carolina. And the Mountaineers have answered the Buccaneers opening drive that put three on the board as ASU comes back with seven on the touchdown pass from Bank Baker to Rashad Slade from the shotgun. Now Chris Barden in for the PAT. And it's good. So the Mountaineers, as the musket fires here at Kid Brewer Stadium, take a four-point lead. Both teams successful on their opening drives, but the Mountaineers come up with seven. So we'll take a break. Back to Kid Brewer Stadium in a moment. The Mountaineers seven, the Buccaneers three. Sometimes there's magic in a melody. Certain music just touches the heart. Now, Instrumental Gold, 40 original hits by the original artists. This is music made for dancing and romancing. Here in one collection are the greatest all-time instrumental hits. Instrumental Gold, on three cassettes or two compact discs. Here's how to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-253-8005. Call from the U.S. or Canada, or send $19.95 for three cassettes or $24.95 for two CDs, plus $4 shipping to Instrumental Gold, P.O. Box 4943, Department AAE2, Omaha, Nebraska. Home teams, Fox Attitude. You're watching Fox Sports South. Nice drive by Appalachian State as they go seven plays, 65 yards, getting a touchdown pass right here. Bake Baker goes across the middle to Rashad Slade, eight yards, just ran a little slant route. And actually, Baker made a nice play because East Tennessee sends a, a, a man late. Linebacker Mark Collins, there he is coming in the screen on the right side, 51. Baker saw him coming, felt the pressure, and unloaded it. Nice, nice drive as out now with a 7-3 lead. And Matt, momentum has turned just a little bit after that opening drive. The crowd here in Boone behind their Mountaineers right now. They kick off deep in the end zone. It'll be down there by ETSU. So again, they take over on their 20-yard line. They marched the field the first time they had the football, but a penalty on the five cost them a possible touchdown. They did come away with three, but AT ASU answers with seven of their own. You know, we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, number one and number two offensive team in the conference. I think you see why now. It's both teams, first time they get to football, they drive and put points on the board. Oh, we could have a lot of points this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, get ready. Get out your calculators, folks. 
This could be an up and down game. Ideal playing conditions today. So Todd Wells, the freshman from Georgia, takes over again as he flips it out to Brandon Walker, but he's met right there and dropped by three Mountaineers. In on the tackle, Adam Nyheisel, who got the start today, was not expected to start. The linebacker from South Carolina, Somerville, South Carolina. He took over for Dexter Coakley, who graduated and went on to the Dallas Cowboys in the NFL. But a couple of weeks ago against Eastern Kentucky, Nyheisel hurt his right ankle. Yeah, good luck from the ground. There, there was nowhere to go. Well, had nowhere to go. So, of course, he makes the pitch, hoping that Brandon Walker can make something happen out of it. But there was nowhere to go. Good defenses. They absolutely just stopped it any way possible from anything happening. That's good That's good defense here. And that's what you do with the option. Just bring it out. Don't let them get it going. Second down. Wells to throw, looking downfield, looking for B.J. Anigan. This time it was knocked out of bounds. Stepping in and knocking it away is Alondo Johnson. He has one of the two Mountaineers interceptions this season, and he almost came up with one right there. Well, he didn't get turned around this time. Adigan's turned him around once or twice, but this time Johnson smelled the out route, and he was right there, made a nice play. Going to get another look at it. Wells drops back, and all that is is just a little down and out, a little out route. Ball might have sailed a little bit to give Johnson time to get over there, and that's a good play. Got his right hand in front of the ball and just knocked it straight down. Now, if the Mountaineers can stop ETSU in this drive, that's going to give them even more momentum, as right now the Buccaneers are still deep in ASU territory. Wells will give it to Walker. Breaks a couple of tackles. He's close to a first down across the 30-yard line. He had to get across the 30 to get the first down, and depending upon the spot, it's going to be close. Well, he got a left foot, so he got the best mark that he can, and that's what I mean by that is the, is the line judge on each side of him mark with the left foot or the right foot. You'd be surprised how much different one foot will be. Nice, nice, nice draw play here. They set it up pretty nicely, and, you know, if you give Walker the ball in any kind of avenue at all, look at this, just driving forward there. He went for every ounce of yardage that he could get. He does pick up the first down. That was a big first down for East Tennessee because it was third and long, and that's a nice first down to pick up. Finally, three Mountaineers brought him down, led by Alondo Johnson, but it took the secondary to bring him down after the first down. First and 10 on the 30 for ETSU. Again, a big third down conversion. And this time they hit B.J. Anigan. He slips the tackle, but then is brought down at the 40-yard line. Again, it's Johnson in on the tackle. Also, John Duncan, number 12. And another first down. You know, the one thing that East Tennessee does that I, th I think they do a good job of to help Wells out there, redshirt freshman quarterback, is they'll allow him to sprint out to the right side a lot of times. Right-handed quarterback, it's easier to sprint right and throw to the right and get set up quicker if he's got to throw on the run and get a little more on it. They do that really well. Adigan runs very good routes on the outside, and it's pretty easy to get that ball to him. Now, the Buccaneers receivers are not very big, but they're awfully quick. Here's Edwards in the quick carry up the middle. He's posted another first down across the 50-yard line. It might be a half yard short. But again, the Buccaneers, after converting on third down, showing no fear, just not marching up the field. Well, last week we saw with the game of Western Carolina, fourth down a couple of times, and they just went for it. They said, hey, Paul Hamilton said, hey, we can make this. Let's just go for it. So that's exactly what they did. They just went for it. ETSU gaining a lot of confidence last year, getting ranked for the first time playing in the conference championship game. Even though Mike Cavins off to SMU now, Paul Hamilton's come in and really got these guys fired up again. B.J. out again. He's got it across the 15-yard line. Another first down as he again burns the Mountaineer defensive back. Just one Alondo Johnson again getting burned by Anigan. Well, he's already had a 34-yard play, and that one pretty close to that, if not a little bit further. That's 38 yards on that reception and once again you just find Adigan and look I want you to see what he does here Matt this is what he does it's so good take a look at his, as how he's going to shield the defensive back he's got inside position so look how he just shields Orlando so there's really nowhere for Orlando to knock the ball down ball is thrown on the line by Wells he brings it in Adigan doesn't drop many passes if you throw it near him and for Adigan it's a good matchup both Adigan and Johnson are both 5'10 there are a couple defensive backs from the Mountaineers bigger than BJ Wells, the keeper, he's going to get in for a touchdown. Breaks a couple tackles, and the Buccaneers come right back and get seven more. I think you're right, Chip. It's going to be an up-and-down game all day long. Well, this is an option play there. They made some nice blocks on the corner. Wells reads his keys so well when he runs the option play. He's just he's dancing into the land of milk and honey there, and that's a, a great, great drive again by East Tennessee. Now Wells picks up his third rushing touchdown on the season. Chapman in 
for the PAT. A knuckleball, but it gets through. It's good, and East Tennessee State back on top as the touchdown run by Todd Wells, his third rushing touchdown of the season. 10-9, a 10-7 ETSU. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 19. Don, our battery expert. You never know when your battery's going to die. But when it does, Don is here to help. Just let Don know what kind of car you drive, and he'll make sure you get the right battery. Better yet, get your car in here, and Don will install an AutoCraft battery for you. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Don't you just love fall? It's getting cooler, and football is a household word again. This is the season for good times and fall values. Your Toyota dealer's got them. Lease Tacoma for $149 a month, and you've got yourself one powerful pickup. Or go bigger in a T100. Rugged, versatile, this truck can do anything. Ah, fall. You can just feel it, can't you? Fall values are at your Toyota dealer now. Back in booth, 10-7. The Buccaneers on top after the touchdown run by Todd Wells. Here you get a look at it. Nice option play, and he just outruns everybody. He just gets by that tackle and then breaks that one into the end zone. Nice touchdown run by Todd Wells. Seven plays, 80-yard drive. They use 301 off the clock, and that makes it 10-7. to seven And <laughs> Get ready, folks. Get the calculator out. We're going to have a shootout today. Inside of two minutes here in the first quarter, 10-7 ETSU. Deep to receive. Brooks for the Mountaineers. This one short again towards the sideline. And it's caught, but as he caught it, he stepped out of bounds. It was caught by Terrence McCall, number 25. And McCall, as he caught it, stepped on the end line of the sideline and break for the Mountaineers. Oh, man, you hate to see that. Jerry Moore probably had a cardiac when he saw that because that ball might have gone out of bounds. Look at it again if he just wouldn't have caught it. Yeah, but then he steps right on the end line when he makes the catch. There's a big difference between having a ball on your eight-yard line and having a ball on your own 35. My goodness. Woo, big break for East Tennessee. So Appalachian State taking over deep in their own territory. Ball on the seven-yard line. Bank Baker to throw. Looking downfield for his tight end, and it's dropped by Frank Leatherwood. He had it, but a big hit knocked the ball away. Big hit is right. Leatherwood had the leather laid to him there by Mike Scott. Oh, my goodness. That's one of those uh, bone chilling, you know, like when he's too cold outside. Oh, we got another look at this. My goodness, you want to see the way to make a tackle? Baker goes across. Leatherwood says, I got it. Oh, no, I don't have it anymore. Nice play by Scott because he also, besides hitting him, hit the ball, too. He went for the ball trying to knock the ball loose. That's that's good defensive move. You know, Scott knocked the guy 6'3", 260 <laughs> off his feet. Scott 5'11", 206. Not bad for the defensive back. Nothing there for the Mountaineers. They try to run the ball. Mario Hankerson on the hit. One of a handful of Buccaneers wrapping up Gerard Hardy. They may credit everybody with that tackle. I mean, that was a whole right side of the defensive line that just shut down that hole. There wasn't anywhere to go. You could look at Mario. Mario had an interception in last week's game. It was the first interception he's had during his career. Yeah, had five as a high school player, but first in his college career. Now a senior, preseason all-conference in the Southern Conference. They call him Super Mario in Johnson City. First time we've called his number this afternoon. So it's third down and 10 on the seven-yard line. Baker to throw again, has a receiver as he has Gibson. He's out of bounds to the 23-yard line. That'll be a first down. Let me tell you a great story about Joey Gibson. His dad, Claude Foot Gibson, defensive back at NC State. Then he played pro football with the San Diego Chargers and the Oakland Raiders. Went on to become a great college coach. And now Joey is playing to make daddy proud. Joey, A.C. Reynolds High School in Asheville, North Carolina. But his daddy, Hoot Gibson, one of the nicest people in the world. You got to be if you're going by Hoot. <laughs> 
Uh, Joey's having a big day, as is his Buccaneer counterpart, B.J. Anigan. Give this to Hardy. He lost his own footing and falls across the 25-yard line, gain of two yards. Got tripped up when he made the cut to the left. No offense by these two teams so far, Matt. It's only 233 yards total offense so far. We're not even through the first quarter. <laughs> You know, the Buccaneers come in averaging just about 360 yards a game on offense. 434 for the Buccaneers. That is tops in the conference. If it was to end the season today, that'd be their all-time high. Third. That's incomplete intended for Darrell Skinner as the clock was running down here in the first quarter. 12 seconds to go in the opening period. Well, that was dangerous. I mean, that was dangerous as uh, Shaka Thomas was playing the corner on the outside here, number two for East Tennessee State. And that one was kind of telegraphed what uh, App was going to run, and Shaka was right there. And, he, he, you know, his eyes got big as silver dollars. He was thinking he's got an interception. He, he could run all the way from here to North Wilkesboro with that one. 12 seconds here in the opening quarter, third down and eight for the Mountaineers. Need to get to the 39-yard line. Baker, a lot of time, looks downfield, in and out of the hands of Gibson. That would have been good for the first down, just dropped it as the hit was applied by Adam Walton, number 11. Well, Gibson can't believe he dropped that one. He's made some great catches so far, and I, I, he won't drop many like that. He's got some sure hands, and he just can't believe he dropped that football. So for the first time today, we'll see a punter, Jeff Marr. <laughs> May not see many today. More average is about 39 yards of punt. Anthony Stringfield back to receive it. He's at the 30-yard line. Buccaneers could come away with a pretty good field position here. Well, it'll probably be the last play of the quarter. This one is going to be blocked by the Buccaneers, blocked by Mike Scott. And now the ball's picked up by the Mountaineers. Is that, uh, that's 52, Joey Hall. That's exactly what Joey Hall planned to do today. He planned to pick up a punt that was blocked and run it for a first down. That's exactly what he had in his mind. How about that? <laughs> Mike Scott comes in uncontested, blocks it. Three Buccaneers around the football. And as you see, Joey Hall ran out of his shoes. <laughs> what a way to end the first quarter. We'll take a timeout. Come back to Boone with the Buccaneers in the road. Lead by a field goal. Last put away to pick up a first down if you're the Mountaineers. Well, this is the way you draw it up. You get your punter, Jeff Marr, back there to let Mike Scott block it for East Tennessee State, and then you decide you're going to let Joey Hall, who's a linebacker, pick it up and run. Joey Hall went to Clark Central High School in Athens, Georgia. He's not used to running the football. He's going to run for a first down. He comes out of his shoe in it, and you know what? He's thinking now, Coach, I need to change my number. Line me up in the backfield. I can run the football. One of those... Uh, <laughs> Multi-side uh, stars, offense and defense. Two-sport. Baker's in trouble, had a lot of time, breaks away from one tackle. He'll take it himself now and stays inbounds before stepping out at about the 43-yard line. Well, they tried to set up Skinner going deep. They, they pump fake to him, and a nice pump fake by Baker, and, and it looked like Skinner was going to break open, but the East Tennessee defense the, the secondary really responded in a hurry, and Baker had nowhere to go, but, you know, he made a smart play. He made a play a seasoned veteran would do. Tucked it under, picked up four or five yards. That makes it a lot easier on second down. Don't take a loss, pick up some yardage, and that's what he did. And he did pick up four yards, setting up the second and six of the 45-yard line. Baker out of his shotgun. And he gives it to... Uh, Carlos Horton. And Horton's across the 50-yard line, close to a first down. Got the other fullback, Kareem Young, this week. Could be a little questionable how much he does play. He had a rib contusion, and so you may not see him playing a whole lot in the backfield. And that could be one of the reasons that you're also seeing App State really open it up this week. I mean, they got three, four, five receivers sometimes in there. They're trying a little bit of everything and just running almost anything at East Tennessee. Banker back over center on the first down just across midfield. 10 to 7, East Tennessee State on top. 
the beginning moments of the second quarter. Pass complete at the 45-yard line. Caught out there by Rashad Slay. Nice audible there by Baker because East Tennessee was coming with a blitz on the outside. He saw it coming and made a little audible there at the line of scrimmage. And, and Rashad made the nice move of just taking a few steps down the field and turning around and planting. And the ball was coming at him. And Jerry Moore is showing a lot today. Sled came in with just four receptions on the season. Already two in the first half, one for a touchdown. Second and five. Banker to throw again, looks downfield, has an open receiver again. Skinner, as he picks up the first down, out of bounds at about the 20. Nice route, nice throw, nice first down. I tell you, both of these offenses, you see why they're one and two in the conference now. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure this one out. They can move the football up and down the field. Baker drops back. He's looking. He's got a couple of receivers that are going to be in this area. One's a shorter receiver. One's a deeper receiver. There you see the first one, Leatherwood, and there you see Skinner's open. Nice toss. Good first down. Both of these clubs have a lot of confidence in their offense. They're not afraid to fall behind early. They have both marched right back against each other. Baker on the pitch. McCall has it around the right side. He'll be run out of bounds by Hankerson. Mario Hankerson takes him out just short of the 10-yard line. Terrence McCall, a freshman, 6-foot, 190-pounder. He was a little hesitant when he got to the corner. I'm not sure that he thought that he was going to get that block on the corner. He thought he might have to cut inside the block, but then he, he turned on the juice pretty good. Take a look at this again. Here comes down the line, Baker with the pitch. And watch McCall kind of just hesitates. He's not sure which way the block was going to go, and then he finally turns the juice on the outside. And look at, look at Mario Hankerson. Can he move from side to side? Whew. He's a big guy at 220, but a lot of quickness. They give again to McCall this time. The Buccaneers right there to put a stop to that run. Curtis Eason, a senior from Jacksonville, Florida, on the tackle. Nice big Curtis, 6'2", 291-pound senior. 22 tackles in the season coming in today. You know, they got a lot of players East Tennessee does on defense. They've logged a lot of playing time. And they've got a real good core of folks who have uh, made a lot of plays on defense for the Buccaneers. One yard to go for a first down here on third down. Baker again to throw on third down. Wide open in the end zone for a touchdown. Frank Leatherwood, his second touchdown of the season, and the tight end who dropped one earlier comes back and picks up the touchdown, and ASU has indeed come right back and taken the lead away from the Buccaneers. This is a great call on third and extremely short. I mean, what a great, <laughs> great call. And, you know, sometimes you're going to slip a tight end. That's exactly what happened. Boy, that's sweet. Barden's extra point is good. The Mountaineers in front now. It looks like Barden is down. He's holding his right leg. Yeah, he got hit. He got hit after the kick. We'll have to look and see what happened to that. 14 to 10. ASU back on top. We'll be back in a moment here in Boone, North Carolina. We're talking football. Taking you on the field behind. Welcome back to Boone, North Carolina. Southern Conference football on Fox Sports Net is brought to you in part by Reebok, the official shoe of the Southern Conference. Interstate Johnson and Lane. And the Greensboro Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Do we have a good one this afternoon? Exciting football up and down the field as Appalachian State and Jerry Moore lead the Buccaneers of ETSU 14 to 10. Great last drive, 14 play, 92 yard. They used four minutes and 10 seconds off the clock, aided by that outstanding play where you get the punt blocked and then you let one of your linebackers pick it up and run for the first down. You don't get a chance to put that play in your offense very often, but when they took the opportunity today, it worked to perfection. Perfectly drawn up. I can assure you, perfectly drawn up. 
Another strong kickoff. This is out of the end zone, so the Buccaneers take over again. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. You know, when that punt was blocked, it came right back and hit Marr in the leg and shot forward. Most blocks don't come back and hit the punter. Well, Mike Scott is an amazing story. He gets through, he almost blocked three or four punts last week. This one, he could have picked it up and walked in the end zone with it. Let's go downstairs to Mark Martin. Well, guys, give credit to that offensive line of Appalachia State University. For the second straight week, they are playing without the services of all Southern Conference offensive tackle Sean Clark, who is now done for the season. He will have back surgery this week. They will get a medical red shirt, and he will be back for what will then be his senior season. Tough break for this program for a young man out of Charleston, West Virginia, who had started 32 consecutive games before missing the last week's game against the Citadel. Thanks, Mark. And with that loss of Sean Clark, even more impressive today, the offensive line of the Mountaineers. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I'm really glad that we could get Mark Martin away from the NASCAR people to come up here and join us today. I appreciate those Valvoline people letting him come up here. You know, such a big race in Charlotte today. And he's up here working the sidelines, doing a great job. Second down to nine. The Buccaneers picked up just one on first down. We'll see if they can answer the Mountaineers' drive that resulted in a touchdown. Wells on the keeper, and he picks up a couple, but he's dragged down by three Mountaineers. In there on the tackle, John Duncan, number 12. I hope we got another look at this play because there's a couple of things that are really fun to watch here, and that is the App State defense trying to get into the gaps and get into the backfield to get something started and watching Carson run from the backside trying to catch up with Wells. Steve Carson, the backside pursuit. I mean, they're just, it's like a reckless abandon. Try to get into the backfield, try to stir up anything that you can to mess up East Tennessee's offense. Here's so Rocky Hunt, who's had a pretty active day chasing down Wells and other Buccaneers. Attigan wide open at the 34-yard line. He's dragged out of bounds by Ken Bird, but not before he picked up a first down. Here's a guy, B.J. Attigan, had over 100 yards receiving in the first quarter. Now, his career high is 151. He is uh, in good shape to <laughs> beat that today. Oh, yeah. One more touchdown for him, too. He becomes the all-time touchdown leader at the school right now tied with Hal Morrison who played for the Buccaneers back in the early 50s. He is the all-time reception leader in yards 1,873 coming into today breaking the record of Chris Beatty back in 94 of 1813. There's Todd Wells's numbers not bad five of seven just about all of them going to add again on the end around Cooper He's all alone. There's a flag thrown. Might be holding on Attigan. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think B.J. might be credited with a tackle on that one. <laughs> I hate to say it, but he, he was not going to let his man go. But what, another great call. Yeah, I, mean, I wish these two teams would just open up the offense a little bit. Reverse there. We hadn't seen a reverse. Lamar Cooper, a sophomore out of Ellenwood, Georgia. You know, where's he coming from? I mean, nobody expected to see this. Here he comes with a reverse, and it's wide open. I mean, he's looking at the great outdoors coming. B.J. Attigan hustling downfield, blocking, but it looked like he had an armful as he was blocking downfield. There's Attigan. He was trying to see if Cooper could break it for the touchdown. You now, Paul Hamilton has kind of countered the Mountaineers' Rashad Slade with this guy right here, Lamar Cooper. Yeah. Holding on offense. Enough for a first down, no. Nope. Well, Attigan, not, not afraid to block downfield. We don't want to tease him too badly, but it's like the old offensive lineman joke they always say, you know, it's not holding unless I get caught. <laughs> I think B.J. was trying to see if he could get away with a holding without getting caught, but he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. And it's still a first down. Ball's in the 49-yard 40 yard line just across midfield. There's Walker, and he'll be wrapped up. Jackie Avery right there and Rocky Hunt right behind him, but it was Avery with the tackle. Out of Gardner High School in Gardner, North Carolina. Boy, he's a good player. He's got a real good chance to be first team all conference this year. Does a lot of things well. Good pass rusher, good against the run. Runs up and down the line of scrimmage with a lot of speed and agility. And, and, and he, he's a fun player to watch. He has in basketball they call that good court presence. They know where things are happening. And he has that here on the football field. Bell's 
Under pressure, looking for Adigan again. This guy is just wide open, spins away from the tackle, and finally brought down about the 15-yard line. J.T. Brooks had him. He spun right away from Brooks and somehow did not go out of bounds, and now there's a flag thrown as well. Well, that could be a lot of things. Face mask, late hit, could be a little bit of anything. If my addition is good, uh, he's going to already go over the mark that he needs to make for a career day for B.J. Adigan. Yep, unsportsmanlike conduct against that state. Adigan with six receptions, and I got him at 152 yards. And here he is open again, as you said, Matt. That just, he's open, stays in bounds. Look at this right here. Good gracious. Great spin and just keeps going and just that's what they're calling. They're gonna call Duncan for an unsportsmanlike conduct on that. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike on the offense. Duncan kind of just threw Adigan backwards. Adigan not a big guy, 5'10. I mean, that's not the preliminary indication that they gave. They gave unsportsmanlike conduct against App State, and then they turned around and gave it against East Tennessee. I'm a little confused on that one, but the guys with the striped shirts made the call. I don't know where that one came from, but the, uh, the initial <laughs> call and indication was it was going against App State. Yeah, uh, there was no one in the picture but out again, unless it was not in the picture we were seeing. Well, the flag was right where he landed, so it makes it even odder, but hey, let's play ball. Ball's in the 30-yard line. This is Walker trying to sidestep around a couple, nothing doing there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage, possibly a half-yard game. Well, there's a lot going on on the field, and we got 22 bodies going every which way, so hopefully their uh, seven sets of eyes are doing better than our four. And you see B.J. Anakin, he could be well on his way to a 300-yard pass reception day. Senior from Largo, Maryland. Second down and nine on the 29-yard line. They give us inside. It goes across the 25-yard line. Brian Edwards, the senior from Ocala, Florida, on the keeper. One of the strongest players on the team. I mean, he, you look at him up close. He's a bull. I mean, he is solid. It's a good look at him right there. He's got some big old machine gun arms on him. And, I mean, he's, he is solid. He's put together. Put a lot of time in the weight room. Last week against Western Carolina, he carried the ball well, but more importantly for Walker, he had eight knockdown blocks. A season high. He does bury blocks. He buries them. Wide open, Lamar Cooper. Ball pass complete to Lamar Cooper. Down to about the 16-yard line. And they move the chains again, first down. seeing so many <laughs> different formations, different sets, different plays, but once again, East Tennessee likes to roll Wells out to the right side of the field with him right-handed, let him throw straight at Wells, 7 of 9, 155 yards. He's already had a day, and we're not even halfway through the second quarter here. Walker, he knocks across the 12-yard line down to the 11. He just ran over a couple of the Mountaineers here. Good look at it again. I tell you, it looks like he just, just head to head with Ben Aiken, and he won that battle. My gracious. Knocked him backwards. Just ran through him. And he didn't have any strength. 5'10", <laughs> 190 goes Walker. Nothing there. Brian Edwards. Rocky Hunt in on the stop. Now, Rocky Hunt, I think, is trying to play like the real Rocky today. Hey, don't come this way. You know, I'll hit you. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> hey, yo, you know, hey. Yo, Adrian, hey. Yeah, another third down now for the Buccaneers. They've converted on many this afternoon. Yeah, but, you know, they'll go for it on fourth down. I mean, they're not, they're not, they're not shy or afraid to do it. Two backs behind Wells. And Todd Wells to throw it, looking for a strength field, and it's incomplete. He overthrew him. Now it sets up a fourth down, and what do you do if you're Paul Hamilton? Well, he's going to kick it. 
He thinks points on the board are important. But, uh, he's right. Any points right now, because you don't know how many you're going to have to have to win the football game, and any points are imperative. And you got a guy that can kick it. I mean, why not use it? 27-yard field goal. He's fourth and four inside this distance of 30 yards and in is Jerry Chapman. The kick is up, and this one is no good. Wide to the right, so they elect to go for three, and Chapman cannot convert. So the Buccaneers hold them. The Mountaineers hold them. We'll take a timeout. Here's the Southern Conference football game of the week continues. Appalachian State in front, 14 to 10. Let's take a look at the kick by Jerry Chapman, which was wide right. Earl Hunter is going to come in your screen. Yeah, Earl does. David Helton trying to get it down. It's a little odd how he has it down. And, and Hunter might have bothered Chapman, or he might have got his fingers on it just a hair because that thing really sailed out to the right. I'm not trying to make excuses for Chapman, but he usually doesn't miss it from that close in. But he could have just missed it. But there were a lot of things going on around that one play. So the Mountaineers are able to hold ETSU. It's still 14 to 10 ASU. Banker back to throw again, looking downfield. This one is going to be a, a short hopper. That bounced in front of Gerald Skinner. Well, both teams want to run the football some. You know, the old line is if you live by the pass, you, you'll die by the pass. So both teams are going to want to run the football some. But when you're having so much success throwing the football, you understand why both teams have been throwing the football. I mean, <laughs> why not put it up in the air? Both teams over 100 yards passing the football. We're at 160 yards passing the football already. Bank Banker using primarily three receivers so far today, but he's really mixed things up. And Hardy is dragged down to the 22-yard line. Hankerson in there on the tackle, Mario Hankerson. Well, East Tennessee now, their defense feeling a little pressure to try to turn something over or make something happen. And Mario Hankerson trying to lead this defense into, into turning something over, or at least hold uh, the, the half offense and not let them pick up a first down so they get the football back. I mean, there's still plenty of time to go before halftime. And you want to just put points on the board right now. It just could be who has the most points at the end wins. Third down, eight yards to go. Ball's in the 22-yard line. Banker out of the shotgun. Has a lot of time again. And this one's going to be short of the first down. It's caught out there by Darrell Skinner, but he's well short of the first down. And for the second time today, the Mountaineers will attempt to punt. Now, the last time they did this, they Ready worked out that play. play. Yeah, the trick play. Mar had it blocked, but it came off his leg and shot out to Hall, who picked up a first down. Ponorowski. That was Ponorowski. <laughs> I said the team who has the most points, obviously, what I meant to say is the team who has the ball last may have the best chance to win, but you got to keep having the points to stay close. That makes more sense. There's Jeff Marr, the senior from Bryson City, North Carolina. Back at the 12-yard line to punt this one. This time, no pressure, and he gets it away. Anthony Stringfield backpedaling to the 20, and he'll take it upfield. And he's knocked down at the 35, and he's across to the 36-yard line. That's where East Tennessee will take over. Pretty good field position for the Buccaneers, and we'll have the Buccaneers drive when we come back as we continue here in Boone, 435 until halftime. ASU in front, 14 to 10. a Mountaineer drive. Beautiful afternoon for football here in Boone, North Carolina, the Southern Conference game of the week. It's a great weekend up here. The bushy Apple, Apple Mountain Festival is going on in Wilkesboro, and the leaves are changing up here, and it's a great time of the year to be here. Wells to throw it. A lot of time this time, and he completes this one down to Stringfield at midfield. 
Anthony Stringfield, a senior from Mitchellville, Maryland, who came in with 12 receptions in the season. Gets that one for a big gain. It's a first down at midfield for East Tennessee State. You know, Stringfield, Brian Edwards, and B.J. Adigan teamed on the 400-meter relay team, and they finished third in the outdoor track and field. They finished third. These guys can run if they get the ball, believe me. Got a little giddy-up, don't they? They got a lot of giddy-up. Edwards, nothing there. He'll lose a couple yards. Oh, he faked me out. It's <laughs> yeah, the other guy's well. got it. <laughs> He's been faking a lot of folks out. There's nine highs of him in the tackle, but I could have sworn it went to Edwards. <laughs> well, it looked like Edwards had it for a brief second. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of the app defense was tackling him. Take a look at it again. Everybody's there banging heads. And then Wells runs this option like a magician. I mean, he really is good with the, with the football. He hides it well, and, and he runs good up and down the field. Second down and one. This is Walker. And he picks up the first down. So Brandon Walker picks up another Buccaneers first down. Jackie Avery in again on the tackle. Chasing from behind. Showing you some foot speed there. If he can keep up with Walker. You know, the one thing that helps East Tennessee State is, is having Wells and Walker. They both played high school football at Forest Park High School. Mike Paris down at Forest Park High School in Georgia. Look at this from behind. Boom! But it helps because they don't miss too many communications. I mean, you know, they, they don't miss many handoffs, and, and they can audible at the line, and these two guys have played with each other for a while. And Avery just ran right with Walker. This is Walker again. And he dropped down well by Earl Hunter, the senior from Columbia, South Carolina. So Hunter comes up and stops Walker. Yeah, Carson, though, made the play. Steve Carson gets into the backfield and, and, and made Walker completely adjust the route that he wanted to run. I mean, made him just go, you know, bow to the outside. And here it is again. Look, there's Carson. See, fighting to the outside. He says, ah, ah, ah. But by doing that, that allowed the pursuit to get there. Nice, nice pursuit by App State. That's good defense. Well, you play defense like that, and people don't, don't get a lot of yards on them. Earl Hunter, good player. Second down and 10. On the 36-yard line, Todd Wells back to throw. Again, looking for B.J. Adigan, and he has him, and Adigan has the touchdown. And that is a new Buccaneers school record. Touchdown number 21 in the career of B.J. Adigan, the senior from Largo, Maryland. Big play receiver, and it was just that, a big play. Todd Wells to B.J. Adigan, 36 yards for the touchdown. Here it is again, and App State sent everybody but the kitchen sink, and they're playing one-on-one -on -one out here. Ken Bird trying to cover Adigan. Not many people are going to cover him one-on-one. -on -one. Look at him adjust to the ball. Did you see him adjust to the flight of the ball? That also put him for a new game career high as he goes well over that 150-yard barrier. The PAT is up and good, so East Tennessee State takes the lead back. The Buccaneers in front, 17 to 14. They kick good by Jerry Chapman. This has been a back and forth game here in the first half. Yeah, it has been. Here's a good look at the play again. Wells just throws everything he can. And see, it's just one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. Just throws it up, lets Adigan run underneath it. Five play, 63-yard drive, takes two minutes and 17 seconds off the clock. You can see everybody blitzing. They sent all of the linebackers, App did, and left one-on-one -on -one coverage with, with the defensive backs, and Adigan is usually going to win a one-on-one. -on -one. They guessed and just didn't guess the right way that time, but that's a great play for East Tennessee State. Adigan, you know, they ought to give him more than a headset when he goes over there. They ought to give that guy something golden to sit on like at Seven catches, 182 yards. That's a career high and a touchdown today, and as Matt told you, that ties him. Uh, actually sets a new mark, and he beats old Hal Morrison's mark. Hal Morrison had 20 in the 1950. Hal's probably not uh, not real happy about that. He's probably a little upset about that. But B.J. Adigan's some kind of football player. Now, what's he going to do in the second half? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they better find him some oxygen for the second half. He's run up down the field. It has been back and forth, and now the Buccaneers in the road in front by a field goal, 17-14. In the end zone, and bringing this one out is Jamal Brooks. And he slips away from one. Now he's across the 20-yard line and breaks about three tackles and brought down to the 28-yard line. So J.L. Brooks, a big return. 
Boy, I tell you, he made a, he made a nice, nice move. I didn't think he had anywhere to go. And I'm not sure he did either. Then he found a hole and went dashing for it. Todd Wells, 9 of 12, 205 yards passing in the first half. Wow. And still two minutes and three seconds to go until halftime. Yeah, there's plenty of time. We may see 15 or 20 more points away. Too. Good field position for the Mountaineers, just short of their 30-yard line, first and 10 of the 29. Jake Baker back to pass. A little bit of pressure, dumps it off. As he dumps it down to Horton. And he picks up a good six yards. Nice screen pass there by App State. And I really think that they thought they were going to do a lot more with that play, and they're going to go into their hurry-up two-minute offense. Clock inside of a minute and 45 seconds. Baker again back to throw. Has Horton again. Has him to the 37-yard line. Quickly met by a couple of Buccaneers. One of them being Mark Collins. I believe they're going to say that's a little short of the first down. I don't even think they'll bring the change off of that. Yep, they'll be third short. Just about a half yard short of the first down. They flip it back out to Hardy. He'll pick up the first down. He's to midfield. Or he's blocked down there. That's a first down for Appalachian State. And they got a full slate of three timeouts. So don't be surprised if they start using them. And an injury timeout. Buccaneer down on the field. Injury timeout here at King Brewer Stadium. Still plenty of time with 109 and three timeouts for the Mountaineers. Yeah, you can get a lot done. And Baker, we mentioned uh, Wells passing. Baker's well over 100 yards now in passing. Uh, and he's completed. Yeah, well, let's see. I had it right in front of me and lost the kind of picking thing. He's 9 of 13 for 115 yards. I knew I had it here somewhere. So both quarterbacks lighting it up. Neither one with an interception either. Still trying to spot who that injured player is for East Tennessee. You gotta like Paul Hamilton. He, here's a guy who runs up and down the sidelines and hand clapper and, and he's a, he's an emotional guy. He kind of gets wound up with the players. Look at him. He's working. He's chawing on the old referee's ear right there, trying to get any break he can. And it might not work right then and there, but it may work before the day is over with. The injured player for East Tennessee State is linebacker Anthony Reed, number 39, the senior from Atlanta, Georgia, but he's walking off pretty much under his own power right there. But it's always a good sign. Regardless of what the injury winds up being, it's always a good sign when they walk off the field. You feel a lot better about the injury when they do that. Baker again to throw it, getting some pressure, and he almost has that one intercepted by Mario Hankerson. He was under pressure for Mark Collins, the senior from Fort Myers, Florida. Collins coming in from Baker's left, and Hankerson stepped in front, almost picked that up, probably should have picked that one up. Yeah, and you know what? They'll run that back in a highlight film next week, and they'll go, you should have caught this. You could have scored. You could have had a touchdown. Look at, oh, he just sees it. He sees it. And he, he might have been cheating. He might have been looking, because look in front of him there. Yeah. There's nothing but the official. If he can beat the official to the, to the line, he scores. Baker was trying to find Hardy out of the backfield. Now Baker working from the shotgun. Second down. Under a minute now. Little quick dump pass, and it's caught by Darrell Skinner. And he's brought down. Just about back to the line of scrimmage. And a timeout call by the Mountaineers. You know, that's always been a good-looking play when you bring the wide out back inside. You let the lineman get out in front of him, but you really got to credit East Tennessee for responding to what was thrown out of that, that inside screen with a wide out. It's always been a good play. And it's a good call there, but it just did not work. They lost a yard, too. It's third down, but they lost the yard not really the problem now they want to at least try to get into the field goal range the longest field goal of the season so look at all those black jerseys in front of you you got to feel like with that play you, you got a great chance to go somewhere but you know hankerson mad that he didn't get the interception he decided he'd stop that play he it did not did not go away from home he stayed at home and made a nice play chris barden's longest field goal this season 37 yards so still quite a ways to go to get him into field goal range the mountaineers trailing by three yeah, this is this is a big series uh, for Appalachian. 
couple of reasons. East Tennessee will get, uh, Appalachian will get the ball back in the, in the second half. So you'd like to go ahead and put some points on the board because you could really, you know, you could get a nice lead. You could be 21-17 at half, and then you could get it, score again. You could be 28-17 like that. Bam, bam, bam. Appalachian still has two timeouts remaining. Baker again out of the shotgun, has a couple receivers to the left side. He's under pressure again by Collins. Breaks to the right side, looks downfield, and it's broken up out there. They're going for Slade. Rashad Slade, the freshman from Reidsville, North Carolina, but it's broken up. Might be number 11, Adam Walton. Well, all the time in the world, East Tennessee blitzing again. Nice job of picking up the blitz. Look at Hardy there, making some nice blocks. And then Baker, with plenty of time, turns it loose. And new. you're right, it is. Adam Walton over there. Anthony Stringfield back to receive for the Buccaneers. So the Mountaineers will punt this one. See if they can down it inside with five. It takes a high bounce and goes into the end zone. So it's out to the 20-yard line for the Buccaneers. They'll probably just try and sit on this one with 23 seconds to go until halftime. But you never know. Yeah, you never know. I, you, know you think that, and then uh, they may have some gadget gizmo trick play that they may decide to pull off right now. You got to be careful here, though, not to make a big mistake. But you know, you might get hit it big. You might think, well, maybe Appalachian thinks we're going to run the clock out. And, Mark, my goodness, he's changed. <laughs> Later today here on Fox Army at Tulane, 3.30 Eastern time, then, out, then Arizona State travels to the Washington Huskies. That'll be a pretty good ball game at 6.30. Ooh. Be a good one. They keep it on the ground and try to run the clock down as we're inside of 20 seconds until the break. Looks like the Buccaneers will go into the locker room with a 17 to 14 lead. Paul Hamilton has to be really happy with his first half, especially the play of B.J. Anigan. Oh, man, and Todd Well. I mean, those two together really had a great, great first half. And, you know, he's so happy to be leading in halftime. Uh, he's bouncing off the walls back at his alma mater. He's, he says, I got to beat my alma mater. I got I to gotta win here. Let's go downstairs to Mark Martin. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Paul Hamilton joining us and Coach 1714 up and down affair. Some pleasing aspects that you've seen from your ball club here in the first half. Well, I think both teams are competing hard. I think it's a, a great Southern Conference football game between two fine teams. I'm, I'm really frustrated that we had the block punt uh, that turned into a touchdown for them on a drive. I think that's a huge play in the first half. Uh, we had a chance at an intercept right there that we maybe could have taken the distance. So we know we're in a dogfight. I think our kids are playing hard. Uh, we got to play a little bit smarter and try to get some pressure on the quarterback. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you very much. All right, Paul Hamilton with us here at the break. Let's go back up now to Matt and Chip. Thanks, Mark. Well, what a first half it was for the Buccaneers on the road at the break. They lead the Mountaineers 17 to 14. We'll come back with our halftime festivities right after these messages. Welcome back to Boom 17 14 Buccaneers. Let's take a look at some of the halftime statistics. Big first half for the Buccaneers, Chip. Time of possession, plus they didn't have to punt. Didn't punt at all. You see the first downs, of course, ETS, ETSU leading that. Rushing yards, passing yards are leading in all those total yards. Also leading their penalties, though. We mentioned penalties at the beginning of the game, and that one really hurt them early in the ball game. They were driving, had a five-yard penalty, wound up having to kick a field goal. Time of possession was a big key that we mentioned. 18.55 to 11.05. And, you know, if your offense stays on the field long enough, usually you can get points, and that's what East Tennessee has been able to do. And that is a look at your Reebok halftime stats with the Buccaneers on the road. Took a three-point advantage into the break. There's Jerry Moore's Mountaineers as he's set to start his second half in what he hopes is going to be a comeback for ASU. ASU grad Paul Hamilton on the other side of the field leading the Buccaneers. And the Mountaineers to take it at about the six-yard line. That's McCall. And he's dropped at about the 28 where the Buccaneers will come out on defense and ASU takes over first and 10. 
Well, Matt, we're going to see if history can repeat itself here in the second half because since 1985, if App State has scored 14 or more points at halftime, they're 93, 14, and 2 in wins. <laughs> they were more 93 of those. You know, you've got to like those odds. So we'll see what happens here in the second half. Pretty good odds. And another uh, stat you want to look at, there's Bank Baker's numbers, 118 yards, 9 of 14 in the first half, a couple touchdown passes. But Brandon Walker for... East Tennessee State. There's some trouble right off the bat coming in and sacking Bake Baker as Bron Witten, the senior for Mission Viejo, California. So a good start for the Buccaneers on defense. That's a backside blitz with the cornerback on the opposite side where there's nobody. He came with a late blitz, and you know what? Bake had nowhere to go. There was nowhere to shake and bake there because here came Bron. He would, hey, I got you now. What a dream for a cornerback to get a sack on a quarterback. You kind of like that if you're playing corner. Good old Brian has started every game since he's come as junior college transfer. Baker back to throw, looking on the left side. He'll dump it down. That's complete. As it's complete to Gerard Hardy. Almost back to the original line of scrimmage. That'll set up a third down. I was going to say, you know, Brandon Walker, in the 14 starts he's had, the sophomore tailback for the Buccaneers, when he's gone over 100 yards, they're 11-0. When he does not, they're 0-3, and he did not have a good running the football first half. No, he didn't have a big first half for him. I mean, that's, it's unusual for him not to put a lot of... Uh, a lot of yards down. He only had 27 on eight carries in the first half, so that we'll have to see if that holds true, too. Look at Paul Hamilton. He's fired up on the sidelines, trying to fire up his defense. Third down, 11 on the 28-yard line. Baker to throw. Under pressure again. This one almost picked off. Hankerson stepped in front again. It was intended again for Hardy. Good pressure again that time from Anthony Reed coming on the backside, and he was just coming right in Baker's face. There's nobody out there to block him, and he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, and look at Hankerson again for the chance at an interception. They're going to find some sticking for his hands or some glue, because I know he's just beating the turf. Can you, he's going to say, I can't believe I've dropped two of those things. There's Hankerson. The pressure on Bank Baker was supplied by Anthony Reed. He went out in the first half shaking up a bit, but apparently he's fine as he put the pressure on Baker, forcing that pass. And was almost picked up. Jeff Marr in the punt. Had one block in the first half, but the Mountaineers picked it up and took it for a first down, setting up a touchdown. This one taken by Stringfield. And he lost his own footing, tripped himself up, and a flag is now thrown. Preliminary indication looks like it's a, it's a block below the back or could even be a clip blocking below the waist is what it looks like against East Tennessee. That'll back them up a little bit. Or they have their first possession of the second half. That was a really nice beginning to the half on defense for East Tennessee State. They came out with some fire in their eyes. Well, any time that you can start during the run, blocking the back on the white team, 10-yard penalty, first down. That's what we said, blocking the back. Uh, anytime you come out on a first down play, first possession of the second half, and you sack a quarterback for a big loss, that is a big boost to your defense. I mean, a big boost. And it obviously set up good field position, even though they lost the field position with a penalty on the, on the change of possession with a punt. Still, you got the ball in pretty good position. But more importantly, you didn't allow App State a chance to go down and score. Back at quarterback, the freshman Todd Wells. He had a super first half. Wells keeps it, and the ball is loose, but he hit the ground first. Nye Heisel smothered him and didn't let him go anywhere. I, you know, I'm not so sure that, that some teams are not going to start playing more defense to where the uh, end or the linebacker is not going to try to pick up the quarterback and make uh, East Tennessee pitch it to one of the backs that, you know, Edwards or Walker. Uh, just because it seems like Wells hurts you more by running the football. I mean, he just seems to make a lot of things happen. He keeps hammering and hammering and just beats you to death. He really hasn't pitched it at all this afternoon, has he? Not many times. Now he's back to throw. Looking for his favorite target, B.J. Anigan. He has another one. 
Out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. That'll move the chains once again for East Tennessee State. What a day for the senior, B.J. Hannigan. Yeah, he is sneaking extremely close to the East Tennessee State single-game record for reception yard. He's 239. He had 182 before that grab, and that was held by Jeff Johnson. He still got it against BMI in 1994. There's the pass again. He's been open on this little out route most of the day. Ken Bird just not quite getting there in time. Uh, App's going to probably have to change their defense against B.J. Adigan. Yeah, they've had Bird on him pretty much since the end of the first quarter, and he hasn't had much success. Wells again will keep this one, and he drags a couple of Mountaineers across midfield. John Duncan trying to do a lasso he did. He's jump on his back and ride and try to lasso him down. A senior from Markham, Canada, had 27 tackles coming in on the day. Jerry Wells kind of dragged him a couple of yards. Jerry Moore gave him one of the greatest compliments I think a coach can, can pay a player. He says, you know, he may not be the best athlete I've ever had, so he's a good athlete, but said I would take 11 on defense and 11 on offense of John Duncan, the kind of person and the kind of work habits he has. That's the best compliment he can get. Wells back to throw, looking long. Looking for Adigan. He goes up. It was a jump ball, and this one's knocked away. This time, Ken Bird knocking this one away. Well, that's the first one that they've been able to knock away, and Wells let that ball get a little too much air underneath. He flew one, threw one of those floaters up there, and then nobody could come down. Here it is again. It might have slipped out of his hand just a little, but he heaves it, and it just gets way too much air underneath it, and everybody's jump ball in that thing. A lot of times when you get everybody to do the jump ball, nobody comes down with it. Looked like Anigan had Bird beat again, but you're right, he had to stop and wait for the football. Well, you'd rather him be a little short than long. If you overthrow, then you don't beat your head in the ground because you can't believe you've done it. Third down and four for the Buccaneers. They converted a lot of third downs in the first half. They got another one here, but a flag is down. Anigan's out of bounds. At about the 38-yard line, but we'll see what the call is here. Flag on the play. We'll see if they bring this one back if it's against the Buccaneers. Disregard the flag. First down, ETSU again, Adigan. And the flag is waved off, no penalty. So they wave off the flag. I've always wondered what the waving off of the flag was. I, sometimes I get lost. It seems to me if you're going to throw that thing, there was a reason that you <laughs> threw it. Now, I may be wrong, but maybe you just want to throw it. Maybe you hadn't thrown a flag all day, so you do. Adigan again, he's now 210 yards receiving for the day, nine receptions. He's only 29 away from the all-time ETSU receiving record for one game. And this guy's been wide open all day long. Yep. And still a lot of time in this one. 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. And a big run up the middle. Buccaneers again close to moving the chains. A run by Brian Edwards, the senior from Ocala, Florida. They give to the fullback. Well, that's a great job. That offensive line, Sam Haney, Travis Cruisenberry, Jim Beverly, Emmanuel Laneza, David Sutton, Jeremy Thomas. I mean, these folks are coming off the ball and making some nice holes up front. They are really playing well. Haney and Cruisenberry are two big, big guys. 290, 289. That's, that's some good poundage on the left side. Took a couple of guys to bring Edwards down. Joey Hall is one of them. This time it's Brandon Walker. He bounces off a couple of tackles, and now he'll be dragged down. Ken Bird in there, and also into the tackle, Jay Gallagher, 56. Well, it was important for App State, I think, in the first possession of the second half to make something happen. They go three and out and turn the ball back over to, to East Tennessee, and we know that East Tennessee's offense has, has moved the football all day long. They're doing it again, and all of a sudden, you're going to get in some trouble if you allow a six spot here. You're down by three. You don't want to get ten down, uh, not to an, an offense like East Tennessee State that scores points. So it's first down to the 20-yard line for East Tennessee State. Todd Wells over center. Wells again keeps it. And he picks up about five yards. He looked like a fullback running in there. Did you see the way he just kept running? Joey Hall had to put the haul on him and grab him down. But he just runs over people. He's not that big. I mean, Wells isn't that big. You know, he's 5'10", 188. But, you know, he wants to run like a fullback. Look at him, just keep running, keep driving the leg, throwing that ball forward, trying to pick up a few more steps. Look at this. Just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. 
That's a great run by your quarterback. And well, they broke the initial tackle of Ben Aiken. It took Alondo Johnson and Joey Hall to get him down. This time Walker sidesteps a couple, but big Jackie Avery gets a hold of him and pulls him down from behind. You notice the silence in the stadium right now? Very it's quiet. Very quiet. And that's because the, the defense for, for App State's got to make something happen. They've got to get the crowd back into the football game to kind of get some get some hopping to get along for, for App. They need a big play right here. They don't need to let them get in the end zone. They need to make something happen. It's a good crowd on hand. And the crowd could, could, could be that 12th man if, if they can get back into it. But they're sitting there watching the defense that East Tennessee is moving the ball on and fixing to get another one on the board. Ball is marked at the nine yard line, so it's first and goal for the Buccaneers. Appalachian State at least needs to get out of here with just a field goal allowed. Tried to avoid the touchdown. This is Edwards. He gets a couple. That's about it. Second down ball on the seven. Well, they got a little bit of a break, App did, because East Tennessee can't get a first down. They can only get a touchdown. So that's a little bit of a break. Paul Hamilton changing up the offense, calling different plays. They're really trying to make a decision on what they want to run. They're running a lot of different things. They're going to take a timeout here. This is an important series for them. I, I can't say that I blame them right now. You're right, because if you get the touchdown here, that really gives you some breathing room, puts you up by 10 on the road. So we'll take a timeout as well. Step aside. We'll bring you back for more Southern Conference football in a moment. Back in Boone, 17-14, ETSU trying to march in the end zone for a touchdown to put him up by 10. Crowd trying to get in it over here, Crowd. Balls in the seven yard line. Wells gives it to Walker around the right side. Tripped up at the last moment. And the Mountaineers keep him out of the end zone. Orlando Johnson made a game saver there because you do not want to give away the six if you can battle it. I mean, you've really got to fight not to give it up. And they're giving up a lot of yards every time. He still had three or four yards on that play. Here it is again. Oh, this is going to come right into your living room. Take a look at this. Move out the way there, Mr. Lion Judge. Here we go. You see there, if he didn't make the play, we got we got six for East Tennessee on that one. You know, Walker's so strong, too. If Johnson tried to go and tackle him with his hands, he probably would have broke through it. That's right. Third and goal on the three-yard line. Wells will pitch it for the first time today, and Walker walks in untouched with a touchdown. A huge touchdown for the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State. And it's by the sophomore, Brandon Walker, his seventh on the season. Look at Paul Hamilton. Is he fired up or what? I think he wants to play. Has he got any eligibility left? <laughs> Jerry Chapman in for the extra point attempt. Trying to put the Bucks up by 10. And it's good. So a great start to the third quarter by East Tennessee State. And on the road, the Buccaneers have opened up a 10-point lead. 24-14, ETSU. Just a, here's a couple different looks at it. Well, it's nothing but the old triple option and nice pitch here. And Walker knows exactly what to do with it. Brandon Walker makes a nice cut. It's wide open. I mean, nobody touches him. He gets into the zone. And, and, and you know what? Todd Wells has set this thing up all day. He's cut the ball up so many times, and there the pitch is just wide open. 12 play, 72 yard driver. Look at Paul Hamilton. My goodness. You think he's not loving this? Hey, he's so excited. He probably could walk home today if they win this ball. Run. Game. <laughs> no, Jerry Moore is not a happy man. That's, that's the tale of two cities there. One happy man and one less than happy man. Now the Mountaineers down by 10 will be starting from their own 20-yard line. Another good kickoff for the Buccaneers. Let's go downstairs to Mark Martin on the sidelines. 
All right, guys, Chip, you were talking about Brandon Walker getting in untouched, and it's a guy who is great in the open field when running with the football, but also this guy loves contact. He's not like a lot of backs. He doesn't shy away from putting the shoulder pads into the defensive guys. In fact, coming into today's game, 37% of the yardage he had picked up this season was after he had made contact with the defender. Open field or contact, it doesn't matter. Brandon Walker knows what to do with the football, guys, and he has his team in the lead right now by 10. There's the sophomore Walker, a preseason all-conference performer. And they give it to Hardy here for the Mountaineers. And he's across the 25-yard line. Now, one thing about Walker, he may be getting a lot more carries here the second half with his 10-point lead running the clock out. They might do that. I think it's going to depend on what App State does. I would not be surprised to see App now go back to something they did in the first half, and that was fine. I think it's really good. I mean, our buddy Joey was, was open a lot. They hit him with some big passes early and really haven't been able to go back with him since he couldn't come up with one across the middle on a big third down, and that was in the second quarter. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if they go back to him. Now, Bank Baker from the shotgun. Second down and five. He's under pressure, gets it away, and this one again through the hands of Gibson. He may have heard some feet behind him because he knew if he caught that one, he was going to get stuck pretty good. Well, and I think the, the pass was a little behind him. He was running a little turn-in route, and I think Baker is a little behind him on the pass there. Uh, but let's take a look at it here. Let's see. It looks like I think it's, yeah, it's a little back behind him. When he made his turn, he was turning back one way, and then it was the pass was back on the other side. So that would have been a tough catch if he'd have been able to, to pull it down. Took a little uh, offense, too, to Mike Scott's hit after the play. Scott was right there, and there's a player down. I think it's Mark Collins. Right outside linebacker, 51 senior. I think that's who it is. I'm going to tell you, folks, we're way up here at, at this stadium. It's it's difficult sometimes to see the folks, but I think it's Mark Collins. It is. That's a good sign of him walking off the field. Not an excuse, but it's telling like it is. It's pretty, pretty high. Great facility. A beautiful, beautiful stadium. I'll tell you what, if you ever have a chance to come see a game up here, you should. The mountains in the background and the leaves are starting to turn. Smells like football in there. I mean, this is good groceries. It is a beautiful place to watch football, that's for sure. Now we just got to get App back in the ball game, so make it a lot more fun for us. 24-14, the Mountaineers down by 10. Baker back to throw it. Looking downfield, has a lot of time. He finds his tight end, Frank Leatherwood. He's still on his feet. Three Buccaneers, now four, and no one gets him down until he gets across the 42-yard line. Frank Leatherwood, all 260 pounds of them, just dragging the Buccaneers' defense. And he had to hold that football, too. Two hands, nobody was going to get out of his hands. Well, that's another guy that you got to go to. Baker spears it. Leatherwood, a former quarterback, knows how to just get in the middle of the area and just hunker down and find somewhere to just take it. And look at this run. He's just dragging them. <laughs> that's what happens if you weigh 260 and you're playing tight end and they give you the football. Look at this, and he runs again. I mean, everybody's hitting him high, low, medium. He doesn't care. He's going to keep moving those big legs. How about Shaka Thomas? She just got, just got plowed. Baker again looking to throw. Has Hardy, who steps out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. So the Buccaneers defense giving some ground in this drive to the Mountaineers. A nice move by Hardy there. He turned his body around to make the haul in and still managed to stay on his feet and pick up an extra yard or two. And that's, that's, that's good athleticism. You know, outside of their game against Clemson to open the season, which was a loss for the Mountaineers down in Clemson, but uh, this club has not had to play from behind very much this year. No, they haven't. You're absolutely right. They're not used to being uh, climbing up the hill. From the very beginning last week in the rain in Charleston, the Mountaineers completely dominated the Citadel. They give this to Hardy, breaks a tackle. Collins had him, but then the rest of the Buccaneers right there to back up their teammate, Mark Collins. No gain. Oh, you're right. Collins makes a play, gets in there, and slows Hardy up enough to allow the rest of the defense time to react and then make the rest of the play. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how important it is to get somebody in the backfield. Look how deep Collins is. Collins is in the backfield, slows up Hardy just enough to allow the rest of the defensive folks to just gobble him up and I mean that's exactly what they did there that's great defense and you got to give some credit to Curtis Easton nice play Curtis all 291 pounds of him Baker again looking to throw wants Hardy but first he dumps it as he sees Skinner who's still on his feet across the 40-yard line 
in the only tackle, Bron Witten, but it took again more than one Bucky Hanna to bring him down. Also, Hankerson was there. Well, he did the wiggle worm there. He would not go down. He kept spinning and wiggling and, and jiving and shucking. Here we go. Oh, look at this. Look at this. We got him on the ISO camera. Here we go. Gets the pass, makes a nice move. Now watch this. Spins. Put that hand down and keep running. Wiggle again. Mario Hankerson, though, locks it. Mario doesn't miss many if he's got you open field. He'll line you up and make a good stop. Baker again, back to throw. A lot of time. And this one is complete. Carlos Horton out of the backfield, the senior. Well, they're running good routes right now. I mean, App's gotten back into what they were doing in the first quarter, and they're finding the right people that are open. And Baker's got plenty of time, most of the time, to throw the football, and he's delivering it to the to the receiver that's open. Now, Bank Baker's having a good afternoon, 15 for 23, a couple of drops as well. That would have been for big games. Mm -hmm. Baker back to throw again. Has time, but now. The defense of the Buccaneers reacts and comes in, and they get him brought down by Robbins, the inside linebacker from Pensacola, Florida. Yeah, Tarek Robbins came in uh, late. He just kept coming and kept coming. App State tried trips on the left side, three receivers on the left side, and Bake couldn't decide which one to go to. Uh, and he had people that were close to being open, but he just couldn't pull the trigger. He said, nah, just a little indecision there, and he probably would have been better off if he'd have just gone ahead and unloaded it, because now it's third and too many. Yeah, just thrown it away. Had the time, but then he elected to hold on to it. This time, Baker's under a lot of pressure. Rolling to the right side, sets himself. He's going to get hit, but he gets it away, but it's knocked away as well. Knocked away by... Raheem Alamin, as it was intended for Hardy. Well, he had a lot of He was just throwing it to where he could find some black shirts at that point. He was looking for anybody that had the same color jersey he had on. Sets up a fourth and 19, so the Buccaneers have been able to hold ASU on this drive. Two big sacks the last two series by East Tennessee has, has made the difference in getting the ball back. Anthony Stringfield deep to receive. He's at the 10 yard line for ETSU. A delay on the punt by Jeff Marr. Now he lofts it high. And uh, it's touched at the five yard line. Well, he thought about running that thing. <laughs> he was eyeing run, and the coaches in the booth next to us from after yelling, run, run, run. And then all of a sudden, East Tennessee, if you guys turn around and look, and they're yelling, kick, kick, kick. They didn't want him to run it then. <laughs> he might could have run. I don't know. He had a long way to go for a first down. Well, it was down to the five-yard line. That's where they will take over. We'll take a timeout. 24-14. The Buccaneers on the road have the lead. Well, a couple of bigs helped out as they hold the Mountaineers, and now ETSU takes over on the nine-yard line, just short of the 10. Jerry Moore's club having to come from behind, down 10. The well, they, they got to make something happen, man. I didn't mean to jump your bones there, but they got to make something happen right now. I mean, we're getting to a crucial time in a football game where that defense has got to rise to the occasion. I was going to say, the Bucks possibly now going to go more to Brandon Walker. Or are they still going to keep it wide open and go with what's been getting it done so far? And this time it's Edwards. He has a big hole and he might be gone. Will he outrun the app defense? Shaka Thomas trying to get him. He won't get him. A 91-yard touchdown run for Edwards. The question. They're going to run Edwards right up the gut. He's going to go 91 yards for a score. You saw some of that speed. I told you he was on that 400 meter relay team. Did you see him turn the afterburners on? I told you they don't have a fullback and a tailback. They got two people that run like tailbacks. My gracious, did he explode? You think Paul Hamilton didn't crank? Oh, He's man. hugging everybody and high fiving. Good gracious, is he happy? Edwards will need some oxygen now. He's still down there. As he ran with all he had, his previous long run of the season, 18 yards. He takes that one, 91 for the score. Well, that's a that's a that's a real big big play for East Tennessee. My goodness, this to put the Buccaneers up by 17. Brian 
Edwards still trying to catch his breath again. That's a long run when you're not used to running 91 yards. The kick is good. So surprise, surprise, ETSU on the road has pretty much dominated this one so far. It's 31 to 14, Chip. Uh, well, this is this is nothing but straight ahead, and he just outruns everybody. I mean, the whole secondary outran B.J. Adigan. He's outrunning the officials. He's outrunning everybody. Made a stab at him late. But you know what? Orlando Johnson just cannot get there. I mean, this guy can motor 6'4", 214 motoring folks we should have timed that uh, that 91 yarder and seen how fast he ran there because he was he was shot like a cannon through there look at this again i mean it's just straight at you and then goodbye good night irene and he did the smart thing running for the sidelines made it the longest distance for somebody to catch him that's smart running by the running back he just kept running. He just kept on. I think he thought about trying to run out of the stadium. See, if he wouldn't have done that, he probably wouldn't have been out of oxygen. He'd have been all right if he'd have stopped when he got to the end zone. You know, some of those fullbacks, they get about 20 yards, and they start to lose their speed. He just kept it going at the same pace the whole way. He's just now coming back to the bench. Wow. There's got to be a game ball going to him after the game. Well, that, that, that's a big one because now App State's really got their backs against the wall. Scoring drive, one play, 10 seconds. Mountaineers in trouble now. They'll down it in the end zone, take over on the 20-yard line. 31 to 14, the Buccaneers have the lead. Now the Buccaneers showing the one double-A football world today that this club certainly is for real this year, coming on the road and showing all their weapons. Well, they scored three unanswered touchdowns right now. And you can't you can't do that when you're going up against the top ranked offense in the conference. And they have really got a hill to climb, really got a mountain to climb. So Bank Banker out of the shotgun. They'll be throwing and throwing and throwing now. Gets his pullback Horton. And he has a big game. That'll be a first down for the Mountaineers. Well, another concern that you're going to have now if you're out of state, you've got to put points on the board, but your defense is just not stopping anything East Tennessee State is doing now. I mean, they're running straight at you. They're throwing the ball. They're doing a lot of things. So your defense has really got to spend the time here while the offense hopefully can get out of field and score by trying to come up with a way to stop East Tennessee State. Now, one thing as you look at Bank Banker's numbers, pretty good numbers, two touchdowns. Now, on the season, the Mountaineers, not a good third quarter club. Just six points in the third quarter this year, but they do have 32 in the fourth quarter, so they're not out of it yet. They've been a fourth quarter club. This pass is complete, but there's a flag down. Horton again on the reception. Now, I think that's going to go against Dab State. I'm afraid our friend Joey Gibson is going to get caught with a little clip. After a great start for Gibson, it's been a rough second and third quarter for him. The Buccaneer fans wearing the blue and gold. I don't think if you'd have told anybody that it would be 31-14 at this point in the game that anybody would have believed you. I think everybody thought this game would be pretty close all the way. Holding on the offense during the pass. 10 yards previous spot, replay first down. So they back up ASU. That's where they're going to call it, right there. I didn't see a whole lot of holding, but... Hmm. I'm not wearing a striped shirt. Yeah, Gibson was... On Chad Freeman, 43. I'm not sure if he grabbed a hold of him or just kind of tripped him up. Yeah, almost looks like, like we thought originally, like more of a clip than anything else. He got him from behind. So Baker out of the shotgun. First and 20 on the 23 yard line. Looking downfield again. Has Gibson now, and Gibson breaks away and is finally brought down, but just about at the 40 yard line. Well, that's the place they need to get Gibson where he can go and get get set up and get turned back toward the quarterback because he can run with the football after he makes a catch, and you'll see a nice move after he makes a catch here. Good pass. 
by Baker and then Gibson. It was, it was set up. He was down the middle. He was open enough to where he could get set up. Then a great run after he makes the reception. Cut by Shaka Thomas, but yep. then Raheem Elamin finally was able to bring him down. Pretty good speed out of a linebacker down there, too. So after the hole, Gibson comes back with a big reception. The first down. Ball's in the 41-yard line. Baker pumps and is looking for Gibson again. This time it's overthrown, and Gibson gets a pretty good whack as well for Mike Scott. Young fans over here and the coaches were out on the late hit. And Scott really did lay the leather to Gibson, but they did not get it. Really not a catchable pass either. Nope. Well, that was secondary. Baker wanted to go inside to the short man. But there was just no way. I mean, that was covered. He was trying to go inside to Skinner, but Skinner was covered. And so Gibson was a secondary receiver. And he really did kind of, he wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be intercepted. If, if Gibson couldn't catch it, nobody's going to catch it. You see the time on the upper left-hand corner of the screen inside of two minutes here in the third quarter. They give it to Horton. Nothing there. Well read by the Buccaneers defense. And that will set up a third down. Anderson again in on the play. Tim Mario's made some big plays today, and, and you know what? The, not getting the two interceptions that he had a chance for hurt a lot less if they win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he won't think about it nearly as much. Had the first one ever last year, and he could have come back last week, could have come back a week later with uh, uh, two, doubling it up. Yeah. Banker again looking downfield under pressure. And this one is caught. He took it out of the hands of the Buccaneers. Daryl Skinner. That ball was in the hands of ETSU, and Skinner just grabbed it right away. You know, Braun Wetton will not believe it. He cannot believe it as the ball hit him in the hands, and Skinner was there just to say, yep, yep, it's mine. I'm going to take it away with it. And he just goes on into the end zone. Here it is again. Take a look at this. He never breaks stride. He handed it to him almost. Braun was trying to bring it down. And he just kind of handed it to Skinner. Great play by Skinner. That's a big touchdown. And the extra point is good, so still a lot of football left to be played. A huge score for ASU to get back within 10 points. They're right back in this one at 31-21. Just salivating, thinking. And then look at that. That's a look what I found in my Easter basket play if I ever seen one. Woo! You know, so many times too after football has been tipped, it's, it's tough for a receiver to keep his eye on it and keep control of the football if it goes back in his hands, and he does just that. Yeah, and you know, the old Mountaineers fired up about that. you got to like it. Now, see, that brings the crowd back into the game. This is exactly what App State had to do to start the football game. They needed to get the crowd involved. Now, the defense for Appalachian has just got to go, folks, we've got to make a play. We've got to go three and out. We've got to make a turnover. We've got to make something happen. Give it offense the ball back. They went five plays, 80 yards, and only used a minute and 59 seconds. I mean, that is sweet. Baker to Skinner, a 43-yard reception, and the PAT is good. Still 106 to go here in the third quarter. I already mentioned how good of a fourth-quarter club the Mountaineers are. This kickoff will be downed in the end zone by Anthony Stringfield, so East Tennessee State will take over. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. And we'll see if the Mountaineers' defense can rise to the occasion and have a good series here and try and get the offense the football back. Let me lay one on you. You're not going to believe. We've got 781 yards of offense today. Wow. <laughs> Well, the top-ranked offensive club in the conference, ETSU, has certainly not let anyone down today, but the Mountaineers showing the uh, flexibility of their offense at times, and what a job by Big Baker this afternoon. Yeah, get the crowd in it. Still just about a minute to go in the third quarter. Not much there, a couple of yards on first down for the Buccaneers. Rocky Wolfork, the freshman from Fredericksburg, Virginia, his first carry of the afternoon. Yeah, he's in for uh, Edwards, who's, who's probably still over there breathing deep. 
And here you see him on the corner left side of the screen. He yep. bent over a couple of times. He's probably just about set to get in there, but... 91-yard run, that'll wear you out. That wiped him out. Second down and eight. It was a gain of two for Wolford. Now the pass, again it goes to Add again. He has a first down. This guy's been unbelievable today. He's been wide open, and the times he wasn't open, he got himself open. Yeah, well, the sad, the sad thing for App there is that Ken Bird just slipped and fell down on the play, and it's hard to cover somebody when you're laying down or on the ground. You just cannot cover anybody. He just slipped. It just happened. He just slipped on the turf. And if the Mountaineers are to come back, Chip, they're probably going to have to find a way, Jerry Moore and his club, to stop B.J. Anigan. Yeah, I, I don't know what you do. you got to do something to him. Now, he has gotten a lot closer to that all-time game record. Well, that's the end of the third quarter. We'll come back. Still a lot of football left. Mountaineers by trailing by 10. Welcome back to Kid Brewer. Three quarters of play. The Buccaneers on the road leading by 10 as Jerry Moore and his Mountaineers trying to come back. A great close to the third quarter for the Mountaineers as they trail by 10. It's a first and 10 on the 35-yard line for ETSU. Wells looking downfield. Again looking for Adigan, but this time he overthrows him. And Adigan was well covered that time. John Duncan, number 12, was out there. Also, Alondo Johnson on the play. Well, you might see App change their defensive secondary just a little bit. Ten catches, we mentioned 220 yards, and the all-time ETSU record is 239. Here comes. This is a big, 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 big series of downs for both teams, but especially for App State. If they can hold them here, get the offensive ball back, and, you know, just nudge a little closer. Dig a little deeper in the well. Todd Wells again to throw. This time it is complete. Lamar Cooper bringing that thing down. And you know who brought him down? John Duncan. I mean, brought him right down. Big third down and two here. Matt, you've got some decisions to make, too, for East Tennessee. Here it is again. Oh, that is a football hit. Crowd back into it. Right, this is what's great about college football. I'll tell you what. Anthony Stringfield wide to the right. And Wells will call timeout. I think he tried to draw the Mountaineers outside and couldn't do it, so he calls timeout. So we'll step aside as well. 14.08 to go in the fourth quarter. The Buccaneers lead 31 to 21. Well, there you go. Hamilton talking to his quarterback, Todd Wells, and the rest of the offense for the Buccaneers as they're just about set to come back out there. Third and two, a very big play in uh, what could be uh, a very special drive for the Buccaneers if they try to keep this 10-point lead. They give this to Walker, and he has the first down and a lot more. Knocked out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. He almost broke that off. We were talking in the break about Walker maybe going for a big run. He gets it right there, and they move the chance. Sweet play, and, you know, a lot of times when a, a team gets in a tight goal line, almost a goal line defense on third and short, if you get past the line of scrimmage and get into the secondary, you can make something happen. That's exactly what Brandon Walker did, and he came extremely close to going all. Oh, well, the Buccaneers offensive line did a good job to take number 52, Joey Hall, out of the play. Opened up that hole for Brandon Walker. Well, he doesn't need much. You're going to see him. He's gone. Ball resting on the 40-yard line, so he stepped out of bounds before the 36. Still a first down. Wells keeps it himself. And a flag down. That's going to go against... East Tennessee, the tight end was looking for a wide out because he stepped back off the line of scrimmage. They didn't have enough men on the line of scrimmage. He tried to step back up. They're either going to call motion or not enough men on the line of scrimmage here. Hard to do that. Illegal motion, offense. Five-yard penalty. Didn't First know if they'd catch him still moving. He was still moving when they were getting ready to snap him. I didn't know which one they'd call, but it, it was it was pretty obvious. Everybody up here saw it and we're you know good ways away. 
So they back up five yards, first and 15. Once again, that could be a penalty that could hurt them. On their opening drive, they had a penalty inside the 10 yard line, which brought them back, and they had to settle for a field goal. But so far, it hasn't come back to haunt them yet. We'll see if this one does. Wells again keeps it, and he's wrapped up and brought down. In on the tackle was Steve Carson, number 85, and number 95, Rocky Hunt. He also in on that one was Big John Oberman, who was in there. A nice play at, at that point. And I tell you what, they're getting some good defense, and yet Jimmy Loburn was in on that stop, too. Here's the key again. You don't want Wells to run it up the field. You string it out. He didn't have anywhere to pitch. He didn't have anywhere to run it. Inside of 13 minutes now. Second down and 13. Wells to throw. And it's complete at the 28-yard line. Stringfield got it. And he was hit immediately by John Duncan. Good catch by Stringfield, though, because he was hit just as the ball hit him on the number three. Tremendous catch and a big conversion to another first down and move the chains, keep that clock going, too. So it's first and 10 on the 27-yard line. Now the Buccaneers can come right back and march in for a score. That would certainly give their defense some more confidence. Brandon Walker sweeping left, trying to outrun the defense, but he couldn't do it. Mountaineers doing a good job taking away that sideline. Alondo Johnson running with Walker, and he put the hit on him. Not much of a gain, maybe a yard. Well, they strung it out again. Sweet play, still stringing it out. You know, you can use the sidelines as an extra defensive player. I mean, you can just keep stringing it out, and eventually, if you've got nowhere to run but out of bounds, then that's, that helps, too, because they can't gain any yards if they're out of bounds. You know, you can't do that if you get outside the white line. Can't do it? No. Todd Wells, just a freshman. He has had a tremendous beginning to his collegiate football career at ETSU. And he keeps it again. And he's driven back, 52, Joey Hall in there. Also John Duncan. But he gained a few. You mentioned Wells. He's already been the Southern Conference rookie in a week. Two weeks already. And here he goes again on the option play. Breaking it up in there and then keeping it. And here he tucks it. He's going to run through Duncan. He just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. And, you know, I mean, he's having to be hogtied by Duncan, but he keeps going. Another big third down play. You know, last week he was 10 for 14 with 203 yards against West Carolina, Western Carolina. One of them, the... Uh, Freshman of the Week award. Today, he had that in the first half. Yeah, he's 14 and 19 for 269 yards today passing. And he calls another timeout. So the Buccaneers using up a lot of their timeouts here as we still have 10.49 to go. We'll step aside. The Buccaneers lead by 10. trying to add to their 31-21 lead, third and five. Let's take a look at some of these numbers. A lot of yards on the Reebok stats. Look at the yards. 491 for ETSU, 304 for the Mountaineers. It's only 795 yards total offense. We, we told you there would probably be a little offense today. I think there's been some offense. A lot of it. There's a very big third down. Third and five, balls to the 22-yard line. No timeouts left for the Buccaneers. They're looking for the end zone and caught for the touchdown, Anthony Stringfield. A perfectly thrown ball by the freshman, Todd Wells. What a pass by Wells and a perfectly lofted pass into the corner and Stringfield gets away from a couple of defenders and gets the touchdown. Boy, this was, this was an outstanding throw, outstanding audible at the line of scrimmage. Wells came to the line of scrimmage and changed the play. You could tell by, the, by exactly what he was doing. He and Stringfield knew exactly where they were going to go with the football. Adigan hooked up like they were going to throw a quick out to him, and Stringfield just beat the man to the flag and makes a great touchdown reception. The extra point is good. 
And now the Buccaneers really have put themselves back in the driver's seat, 38 to 21 on a third and five. Anthony Stringfield, a great route. And you mentioned the audible. Here's a look at it. Just runs to the flag. And look, look at it. Is that on target? Is, is that throw on target? Good garden seeds. My goodness. And Stringfield, nice concentration because there were players from App. Duncan's in the air. And also, uh, who else is back there covering on that thing? Orlando Johnson was back there covering. Here we go. Look, he's got, oh, my. And he's still... Keeps his eyes on the ball, concentrates, squeezes it, and brings it in. Boy, they convert so many big third down plays. Uh, East Tennessee has, and they've done it all year. I mean, just big plays, big touchdown plays. And that was that was one of the biggest ones of the year right there, because that, that really puts App in a heap of trouble. Buck Band eating it up. Buccaneers back in front by 17 points. 10 play, 80 yard drive, use 516 off the clock, Stringfield a 22 yard reception. I got a feeling Mr. Wells may be the rookie of the week again. If he's not, I want to see somebody who had a better day. The kick has bounced around, but it's down to the end zone, so the Mountaineers take over at the 20 yard line. First and 10 with 10.35 to go here in the fourth quarter. Jerry Morris Club really has to get it going quickly now. L.J. Brooks, 21, was the one who downed it in the end zone. There you get a look at Coach Moore of the Mountaineers in his ninth year up here in Boone. 64 and 33, no ties in his eight previous seasons, plus the games this year for the Mountaineers. Baker back to throw, has plenty of time, finds Hardy. And he's around the 20 and out across the 30-yard line. Where he's brought down by Quattro Jones, the junior from Atlanta, Georgia, number 48. Mark Collins has come close to so many big plays today, and he's made some big ones. He came so close to messing up this screen pass for East Tennessee. I mean, he really made a nice, nice effort to get there and just couldn't quite come up with it. You see the screen setting up. Here go the linemen saying, here we go. Let's go hit somebody out there. Pass goes out. Look at that. Collins so close to just trying to grab anything of Hardy's. He was looking for anything he could get a piece of. Nice, nice gain. Crap. It's a pickup of 12 yards. First down for the Mountaineers. Hardy moves to the left side of Bank Banker. Out of the shotgun. Baker under a little bit of pressure, finds Hardy. He steps out of bounds at the 39-yard line. So it's a gain of seven, second down and a three. You know, all this offense, we got a chance to have a thousand-yard day in offense. I mean, that's a season for a running back. We're talking about that in one game. When's the last time you saw a thousand yards in a game? They have been up and down from the very first possession for both clubs. Great shot by our camera okay, crew Robert. today. We got to compliment all of our production Good people, morning. camera folks. They've done a great job providing you some super pictures of today's game. And it's been a sun-soaked afternoon in Boone, North Carolina. Baker again. And he gets it to Leatherwood. Moves across the 40-yard line. So the Mountaineers are moving the ball. They need to get it in the end zone, though. They hit him in, in, in between the three and the nine. And Leatherwood, we mentioned 260 pounds. That's like tackling a bull in a china shop when he gets to run in north and south. And Baker with another good throw here. Did you see why, you know, App State scores a lot of points and moves the ball, too. They really got to do something now, though. They got to get it in the zone. Now, one more completion. Baker should go over the 300-yard mark today. He's 21 of 31. 293 and three touchdowns. That's a pretty good afternoon as well. Not bad. Baker looking downfield. Plenty of time again. This one's caught by Gibson. As he's running towards the corner, he might get in there and he dies to the corner. That's a touchdown. Joey Gibson gets it in. And that didn't take very much time. These Mountaineers just not willing to go away. Only 922 on the clock. Well, there is 922. A lot of time left for the Mountaineers. Well, I'll tell you what, when Joey Gibson catches it going full speed, he knows where to go with it. And he just dove for that. I love the dive for the end zone. He was going to get the ball across the plane regardless. Gibson's third touchdown of the season. The sophomore from Asheville, North Carolina. 
The extra point is up and good. So ASU has climbed back to within 10 points. 38 to 28. And that puts Big Baker over 300 yards for the afternoon. What a day for both quarterbacks, Big Baker and Mr. Wells, the Buccaneers. We're back with more, 922 to go. Let's take uh, another look at the as to Joey Gibson. Nice lead in, in the corner, and the linebacker just kind of got out of out of whack there for East Tennessee. And look at look at Joey go. Watch him here. He knows he's got to get there, and he's hey, just get the ball inside that orange cone, and that's what he does. And there's six on the board. Isn't this fun? Oh, he reached in with his right hand <laughs> to make sure that ball got across, and it's 38-28. 66 points and almost 1,000 yards of offense between these two clubs this afternoon, and still over nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. This ball will be brought out. D.J. Adigan trying to slip away from the couple, but the Mountaineers are going to wrap him up and drop him inside the 10-yard line. In there on the tackle, number 22, Mike Scott, the senior from Petersburg, Virginia, as the crowd here at Kid Brewer Stadium again beginning to make some noise. All right, here's that touchdown again. It went four plays, 80 yards, a minute 13 off the clock. Baker to Gibson, a 40-yard touchdown pass. The PAT is good. And, and you know what? This is when it's really fun. I mean, this is when it's really fun. Look here. East Tennessee's back in their own, deep in their own territory. Nine-yard line to salute at the end. I don't know what the salute is, but I kind of like that. That's a little different. Salute everybody. A lot of guys are doing that this year. I I've like noticed, the salute. I've noticed that. I don't know what the salute is. Salute to you, too. Let's play ball. Inside the 10, again, it falls on the uh, hands of the ASU defense to try and get the football back. Ooh. Not much there. Adam Nyheiser. Woo! Haven't heard much of him today, but he came in big right there. He made a good stop. That was a takedown. I think you'd get two points for that in wrestling. There's that score drive we talked about. A minute, 14 seconds. The one thing the Mountaineers have been able to do is they've got them in the end zone quickly. <laughs> they have. They've had a couple of drives where they've scored under about a minute and a half, and that's that's impressive. I don't want anybody at home to get the idea that we're pulling for App State, but I, I'd like to see it get a little closer. I'd like them to punt, and let's, let's see what can happen. Let's make it a little more fun here. The keeper by Todd Wells. He's been pretty successful picking up three and four yards of carry on that play this afternoon. And, and that's what you want to do when you run that option, Matt, is if you can pick up three or four yards every time, then, boy, you get yourself in a nice situation in a hurry. There's a player down, a Mountaineer down at about the 13-yard line. Can't make out his number from here. And you should take a look at Rocky Hunt, the sophomore from Gastonia, North Carolina, went to Hunter House High School. There's Todd Wells. The freshman having an unbelievable day. You know, last year the Buccaneers, as there's the player down for Appalachian State, the uh, Buccaneers got great play from Todd, from uh, Brandon Walker, a freshman uh, last week, last year, and now a freshman in Todd Wells having quite a freshman year here at 97. We'll take a time out back in a moment. Guys, East Tennessee State is a hell from the small northern West Virginia town of Farmington. While small in population, it is certainly known for football. Farmington, West Virginia produced not one, but two NFL Hall of Famers, Sam Huff and Frank Gunnar Gatsky. Not a bad town at all. Thanks, Mark. They're looking for a big play. Stringfield going out there. He got it. Might be gone. Has to beat Duncan, and he will on a third and five. I don't believe there's any flags. That is a touchdown for the Buccaneers. Up and down the field. Again on a third down from the 14-yard line. And Wells hits Stringfield for the touchdown. I've run out of accolades to say. Ah, I just can't believe this. Good garden seeds. Third down and five, and you uncork the bomb. And it works. And they're saluting, too. Well, one other thing. That's going to put you over 1,000 yards total offense today. They're going to go for 1,100, 1,200. Still 7.46 to go in the fourth. That, there's plenty of time. Each drive has been about a minute and 50 seconds. The extra point blocked. 
So it's 44 to 28 as they block the extra point attempt of Jerry Chapman. Well, the Buccaneers answered Appalachian State's drive. And now it's back up to the Mountaineers to put some points on the board in a very short period of time. Yeah, that was a nice three-play, 91-yard drive that took a whole minute 22 off the clock. They're playing beat the clock. That's what the game is now. See who can score the fastest in the least amount of time. Here it is again. Well, you know, Wells just, just throws it up. He just says, here, I'm going to throw it as far as I can. Look at Stringfield. Hands, and then just he really shifted into high in a hurry. Orlando Johnson couldn't come down with it. Then it's a foot race, and we already know that Stringfield can fly. You know, he teamed with Adigan and with uh, Edwards, third on the 400-meter Southern Conference, 400-meter reach relay team here it is again really a super pass I can't say enough about Wells who's put it on the money all day long and Stringfield just explodes 86 yard touchdown strike that was your rocket imitation that was the rocket that was the explosion he turned on the afterburners and Wells, again, was under duress. Earl Hunter was in the backfield about ready to hit him when he let go of that one. So here comes ASU. And they'll bring this one out. Still on his feet, R.J. Brooks. They cost the 30 to 35 and his wrestled out of bounds. A big return as he was a good four yards deep in the end zone. Elected to bring that one out and brings it across the 35-yard line. Heck, why not? You don't know what will happen. He might run that thing back the way it's going. All right, now, according to what's been going on here, they should be in the end zone before the six-minute mark. <laughs> App State should be. Man, I'll tell you what, light the lamp. <laughs> Three plays and 91 yards. So 7.33 to go here in the fourth quarter. 44-28, Banker to throw, has a receiver, but it's in and out of the hands of Darrell Skinner. And Jerry Moore pacing up and down as Darrell Skinner runs back towards the huddle. And Jerry Moore is going to be thinking, what's going to happen next? There's a happy buck fan. <laughs> You know, the paint going on is not hard. It's coming off. <laughs> that takes a little while to get that paint off the head. I bet it does. Look at that. 10, 7, 14, 13. Your quarter line score for EPS is a flag down as they bring Baker down as well at about the 27-yard line. Well, we just saw a sign in the stands, and I can't stand it. The woman held up the sign and said, my son is number 73, so David Sutton, from High Springs, Florida, six foot five, two ninety five. We're gonna get David on the air, make sure he gets on there. Says mom held up the sign. See what the flag is. Let the officials decide what this one is. Off sides against East Tennessee. We mentioned penalties in East Tennessee is they've had a hard time with penalties all year. That's their sixth of the day. Off sides, flat team, five yards previous spot. Second down. Six for 50 yards, but that's less than they've been averaging. They've been averaging about 10 a game, but still, that's that's something you just can't have in big games. So it's a second down and five on the 41-yard line for Appalachian State. Baker again out of the shotgun. And he'll let this one, uh, he's trying to throw it away. It was almost intercepted. Almost keeping his feet in bounds was Adam Walton. Adam's trying to push for the fact that he had to be in bounds. He just he just had to be in bounds. You know, Adam Walton and his dad, Grant, uh, his dad, did something that, that very few people have ever done. Father and dad both played at East Tennessee State, and both of them were on 10-win teams. That's the most successful two teams in East Tennessee State history. How about that? Dad and son playing on that. That's pretty impressive. And the Buccaneers have rejuvenated their program in Johnson City now. One of the elite football programs in the Southern Conference. Big Baker sends it out to the right side where it's complete to Carlos Horton. And that's a first down. There's, and there he is. There's our boy. Mom wanted you on the air there. <laughs> David, so there you go. David Sutton's mom held up a big sign. Said, my son is number 73. 
He's, she's proud of him. You know what? We gave him a little air time. That's good. Yeah. Thank you, camera guys. Mom will appreciate that. You know, speaking of saying hello to folks, I was told to pass this along first to play. Baker back to throw, looking downfield. That's incomplete. Buccaneers trying to say the catch, uh, the catch was made by Horton, but not so. The ball was uh, knocked away by Mark Collins, number 51. And uh, that'll set up a second down. Supposed to pass along a big hello to Lieutenant Harry Tetford and his wife to be Kiyoko, who are watching in Yokosuka, Japan today. A lot of ASU grads back in the 80s are friends of Harry, who's stationed on the USS Rodney M. Davis in Yokosuka Naval, Naval Base in Yokosuka, Japan. They're taping this game back home in Granite Falls, North Carolina, sending it out to uh, Japan later today. So I want to say hello to the folks on the USS Rodney M. Davis. I don't know how to say hello, but how about sayonara? I know how to say that. Hello, Kenochiwa. Same to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's hello in Japan, Kenochiwa. Wide open and in and out of the hands of Daryl Skinner, just thrown a little bit too far by Bank Banker. Boy, he broke open. Oh, Big Baker would love to have that ball back in his hands. What did you say they should have scored by? It's 6.33 right now Six on the clock. Six minutes, so they still got a little bit. A <laughs> little bit of time. They've got, they've got 31 seconds to score. They're teasing because they've had these drives of like a minute 10, a minute 15, a minute 20. It's been amazing here the last, gee, the last almost a quarter. It's just been lighting it up. Third down and 10, ball on the 49-yard line. Baker from the shotgun. Has time, and he dumps it to Hardy. And he's brought down at about the 46-yard line. Mario Hankerson was initially in on the tackle, bounced off him, and was brought down by a couple other Buccaneers. Fourth down now. Fourth and seven. Got to go. Got to go for it. You have no choice at the end. And if you got a play you hadn't used, I don't know what that could be right now, but if you've got one, now's the time to pull it out. They need to get just about to the 39-yard line. Banker looking downfield, lets it go, looking for Gibson, and he throws it out of bounds, and uh, Gibson never had a chance. Looked like that one just got away from Baker. So the Buccaneers hold, and they will take over first and a 10 on the 46-yard line. Well, we hadn't talked about B.J. Adigan for a while, but, you know, he's only 17 yards short of setting a new single-game record for reception yardage. And I don't know if the East Tennessee folks are aware of that, but I would imagine that they're not going to be flinging the ball quite as much now. But if they're aware of that, they might actually try to hit Adigan a couple of times to get him that mark as great a day as he's had today. I, I, I wouldn't be shocked by it, but I also wouldn't be shocked if they just try to run the football. Give it to Brandon Walker. He slips away from a couple. Duncan trying to track him down, but not before Walker's across the 40-yard line, stepping out at the 39. He's trying to get to that 100-yard mark. 67 before that carry. We teased about that 100-yard mark. Every game he's played in that he's rushed 100 yards or more, East Tennessee State has won. And in the three games that he has not, East Tennessee State has lost. At 82 right now. Paul Hamilton talking for a moment with Anthony Stringfield. Can asking him what he feels like to catch those bombs. Walker again, and he's close to a first down, about two shy. So he gains about eight on first down. He's going to get the 100 now if he keeps doing that. And he was at 82. 15 carries. If they keep it on the ground, he's got 91 now. He should get that 100-yard plateau again. Now the Buccaneers are back home next week. It's homecoming at the Mini Dome as they take on the Citadel Bulldogs. Walker again. This time he is wrapped up. Joe Best and Joey Hall in the stop. Joe Best 
stop. That's the freshman from New Bern, North Carolina. He took over when Adam Neuheisel went down against Eastern Kentucky with Neuheisel going today. Ball Best came off the bench. Oh, yeah. And there's the folks. Wanted to say uh, <laughs> Kenochiwa to Harry and Kiyoko. Tell them they're on down there. Tell them they hit the jackpot. The USS Rodney M. Davis in Yokosuka, Japan. Next week, it doesn't get any easier for Appalachian. They travel to Furman to play the Paladins. So they got a tough road next week. After the Citadel, ETSU has an open day before going to Furman, then home against Georgia Southern. So it doesn't get any easier for the Buccaneers. But those are two games, if the Buccaneers can hold out today, that really could uh, have a significant effect on the Southern Conference champion. Yeah, and, and, you know, usually you win those open weeks. Where are they going? Some fans electing to uh, take on or take in that uh, festival going around up here today. You try to get a hotel room last night, almost couldn't do it. Boy, I tell you, I expected 150,000 in North Wilkesboro today for that big festival down there. Trying to get the first down on third and one. They dive across. That'll be awfully close. The leaves turning up here. Everybody comes up to see the leaves turn. I mean, it's a great time of the year to be up in this part of the country. Well, we're closing in on 1,100 yards in total offense. We're at 1076. Closing in on it. 1100 would be a nice even number. Inside of four minutes now, Walker again with the carry as he is getting awfully close to 100 yards. That is his 18th carry of the afternoon, his long run being 18 yards. The numbers for East Tennessee are going to be staggering because they're going to wind up having two backs over 100 yards rushing and Todd Wells right now 16 out of 21 for 377 yards passing. This is almost like a BYU game with Utah, isn't it? Yeah, uh, those wild ones in the whack. No, Air Force has been known to put it up every now and then. That's yeah. where Paul Hamilton came yep. from. Yep. He knows how to do it. You don't spend time with Fisher to Barry and not, you not learn how to have the football thrown. Again, it's Walker, and this time he'll be stopped at just about the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one. Before that carry, he was three yards shy of the century mark for the afternoon. 44-28, the Buccaneers in front. Here's another amazing stat today. East Tennessee State is yet to punt the football. Yes yet to punt the football. Is the punter even here? Is he here? Yeah, wouldn't he need him making the trip? David Helton, he's back at home watching this game with some popcorn in the, in the backyard. 685 total yards. And Helton say, come on guys, just let me have one chance to kick the football today. No need in it. Heck, if you're doing like that, it's 1,082 total yards. Man, no points, no yards today. Good, gracious alive. 72 points, 1,082 yards. You think Southern Conference football is fun and exciting? Mm -hmm. You've missed the boat. It, you know, last year the Buccaneers, and they went 10-3 and three and did play for the conference championship. They did sneak up on a, a couple of folks, and even going into the one double A playoffs, folks are saying, you know, East Tennessee State, how good are they? So there'll be no sneaking up on anyone this year after this win up here in Boone. No, this is this is this is one that rattles some cages. In fact, second straight win now over App State after they lost 14 in a row. So, in uh, the last win they had here was 1978. So this is a huge victory on the road for East Tennessee State. There's a beautiful shot of Kid Brewer Stadium looking out over campus. Third and four on the 22-yard line, and Wells on the keeper running to the right side. He's going to get the first down and possibly more as he's inside the five and down to the four-yard line. He put a shake-and-bake move on somebody in that backfield and left the Mountaineer player just reaching for air. Well, that's the advantage of having a quarterback who can run the football and who can do some things. That's just a naked bootleg, and, and Wells got to the corner and just made, look at this, pitch to nobody. And then it just is Wells running. There he gets past 
Defensive end, and then take a look at this. There's the stop, and go. He got past L.J. Brooks there. It was, got more yardage. Yeah, it was Jake Gallagher that just was reaching for nothing in the backfield. What a play by Wells. He'll pitch it. Nothing this time by Jeff Woods, the sophomore from Alpharetta, Georgia, who's getting some feet there. Clock still ticking away, down to 222. Well, if they've taken um, Walker out of the game, he will not get that 100 yards. He was just short of yards. You know, I wonder, you always want to get the 100 yards, but sometimes stats play in players' mind that, hey, right. he has to get the 100 to win. Maybe you don't let him get it, and you show you can still win. Right. Or they just may not know it, may not be, you know, thinking about it. I mean, that's the other thing. It's always possible. 97 yards for Walker today. Inside of two minutes now. And that is a touchdown. Brian Edwards caps off what has been a career day for the senior from Ocala, Florida. His second touchdown of the day. This time, a, a much easier play for him. Yeah, a lot shorter distance there. Nine yards as compared to 91. In fact, the 91-yard touchdown run is the longest rushing touchdown in the conference this year. And you know what? Those folks are glad they made the trip from Johnson City. Would you ever have thought of, never mind believe, that the Buccaneers, despite how many yards they put on the board every day, would come up here and put 50 on the Mountaineers? I didn't think it'd be like, I, I was thinking it might be 24-21 or even 28-27, something like that, but 50-28, nah, I don't believe so. I don't think anybody would have thought that. And the Buccaneers coming in 14th in the nation in one poll. They're going to take a significant jump, I would believe, after today. So it's 51 to 28, 144 to go in regulation, just running out the clock now. We're back to wrap this one up in Boone right after these messages. Again, 40, uh, 51 to 28, Buccaneers. Come back as the Buccaneers side of a minute and 45 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Just running out the clock now as it's 51 to 28, ETSU. This will be a big upset, as you mentioned, in the polls because uh, App State was ranked 6th. East Tennessee was ranked 14th. So you'll definitely see some movement in the poll next week. In fact, we're getting to the time of the season where a lot of those folks that are ranked are playing each other. <laughs> and you can see all kind of stuff here over the next few weeks. Well, we want to welcome all the uh, viewers that were watching the Virginia Wake Forest game where the Cavaliers came away victorious 21-16 over Wake Forest today. It's been a wild one offensive-wise up here in Boone. 51-28, over 1,000 yards of total offense for both clubs. That uh, Virginia game, a much uh, calmer game at 21-16. I can tell you the folks in Charlottesville weren't calm about that because they, they did not want to have another loss after losing to North Carolina last week, leading 20-3 at one point, and then 45 unanswered points by North Carolina. How about Coach Caldwell's Demon Deacons? They've come close so many times. Georgia Tech, East Carolina, and now Virginia. They are getting better. That pass is going to be caught, I believe. I thought he dropped it, but I believe they're going to give him the catch. Well, they shouldn't, because he did drop it. Yeah, it was a great win that uh, Wake Forest had over NC State with a field goal late in the game to win it. Yeah, they definitely, Wake Forest is definitely a much better football team this year. Well, they catch it by Scott Murphy, number 84, by uh, quarterback David Reeves, the freshman from Columbia. He's now getting some playing time the final minute and a half. As Bake Baker's done today. And, now, it's not Baker's fault. He had a tremendous day today. This, the Buccaneers too much to handle for ASU. Reeves running out on the right side. He'll try and dump it down again, and it's complete at the 40-yard line and again complete to Scott Murphy the tight end a freshman out of Canton North Carolina the Baker had 346 yards passing today that's a big enough number to win most of the time unfortunately Wells put up a 377 plus a couple of backs just about over 100 yards one Edwards being over 100 yards there's the uh, sack of grapes Sacked by Brandon Roller, the junior from Alpharetta, Georgia, number 47. Inside of a minute now. Clock 
kicking away. Raves again back to Paris. He's under pressure. He gets it away. This time it is Carlos Horton. And he's across the 45-yard line. Denario Smalls in on the tackle. Also Russ Lindgren, number 16. Jerry Moore's Mountaineers having to regroup after this one as they travel to Furman next week to take on a very good Furman University club. Reeves again looking downfield. He has Horton across the 50-yard line. And he'll stop the clock. You mentioned possession early. We're, we're, we're looking at 30, almost 36 minutes for ETSU and about 23 for App State. A big, big factor in the game as well. We're hitting on some of the bigger factors today. And last week, against the Catamounts, ETSU dominated with about 35, 36 minutes holding on to the football. And today, they've done a great job doing that as well. No turnovers, not having to punt. That's amazing when you don't punt. That, that, that's really, that's, that's an amazing stat to come into this, a place like Appalachian State and not have to punt the football one time. If you would have told Paul Hamilton, no need to worry about your punting team this week, don't worry about bringing your punter, he would have laughed. He wouldn't have believed, I don't think, that his offense could have had this much success. Well, the mini dome should be rocking next week for homecoming in Johnson City because the folks down there have a very talented club in these Buccaneers of ETSU. Well, you know, it all starts with a quarterback. I think that Wells is just, just an outstanding, outstanding football player. 26 seconds as the Mountaineers continue to just try and get something on the clock as the reserves get to play. Reeves completing a pass as it's cut out by Rashad Slade, who had a touchdown earlier. Yeah, I know Reeves is playing against some second unit people, but he's looking pretty good as he's coming. I mean, he's, he's showed some nice composure, thrown some nice balls, moved out of the pocket a little bit. He's, he's had a very impressive uh, series here. Three out of five on the series, 35 yards. Had him thrown a pass until this drive. Under pressure again, gets away. He'll keep it himself and run out of bounds. He picks up about five, six yards of the play. Now it's down to 11 seconds. Maybe one or two plays left for ASU today. And you know, Reeves may be the future for this team. Look at look at Paul. Now, man, he's a happy man. They have, they have already doused him with the water or Gatorade. <laughs> hey, forget he about care. forget about just beating the, the Mountaineers and getting a big Southern Conference win. It's awfully special to come home as your first year as a head coach yep. and just put a licking on your alma mater. Yeah, and he'd been an assistant coach in the league and had not had much success against App State. So to win, he is one enthusiastic human being. I'm going to tell you, it's contagious. The players around Paul Hamilton, they are they are just high as kite. They're having a great time playing football. The, they're all enjoying playing the game, and, and it's contagious. It just rubs off. Yeah, I haven't spent a lot of time with Paul. I, I did meet him last week at the Western Carolina game. He is a very likable person, and he has the folks at East Tennessee State all fired up and believing in themselves, and, and rightly so. This club is awfully talented. Well, he'll tell you that he didn't come into a situation where the public was fair either. So Mike Kevin left a lot of good football players. He told me he just hope he didn't mess them up. I can assure you, Paul Hamilton hadn't messed up any of these things. Former Mountaineer quarterback who was 2-2 two and two against ETSU when he was up here. He was going to get a win against his alma mater in his first year as a head coach. And that one is tipped and falls to the ground as the clock runs to 0 0 0. And this Southern Conference football game is history. 51 28. The Buccaneers win on the road. We'll step aside and bring it back out to Boone. And we'll wrap up this one after this timeout. 51 to 28, the final. Back in a moment.